All right, Ben Mang, today is Monday. It is March 6th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Snake Draft Monday. It's myself, it's White Sox. Dave Chief is out. Uh, so we have three subbing in. We have Kirk, we have Jeff D. Lowe, and we have Ken Jack. Kirk, second draft. Welcome back. Hey, Eddie, what's going on? Yes, it's always good to be here with my uh, with my friends, with Jeff and Ken Jack. Well, I don't think I've ever met before. I don't think, we, right, Ken Jack? I think we met like once in passing at one of the events at Barstool, but that was it. Yeah, but I always respect Kirk. He's one of the, I think, the brightest movie mind, honestly, here as far as like movie trivia goes. You definitely know more than anybody, without a doubt. Well, yeah, obviously, non Goochman division. Uh, <laughs> so that, pu- that pussy didn't show up today, no surprise. But that's fine. That's for a different day. Yeah, I know. I know this. I keep notes of these things. But yes, thank you. Thank you, Ken Jack. I appreciate that. <laughs> I don't so think funny. I've ever met Kirk. No? Mm-mm. What? I, don't think, I think that's right, Dave. I don't think I've I don't think, I don't we think ever, we've uh, met in person. No, I think I remember that. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think we have. No, there was a no. minute Maybe at, like where... a dozen tournament or anything like that. Any of those were in New York? My dozen tor- tournament have. appearances have been very brief. Uh, and we've been knocked <laughs> yes. out in the first round each time. So no, no not not so far. I think oh, you're man. probably the last like, full time employee that I have not met that's in content because it was chaps for a minute because we just never overlapped in New York City. That but... was very funny. You never meeting chaps, crap. I know, it was, <laughs> was like, but years. it was weird meeting him in person because it's like I've known him forever. You know. So it's like, oh, hey, nice to meet you, I guess. Boy, I hope to have that conversation with you soon, Dave. That sounds great. We will yeah. make that happen, Kirk. Hopefully, hopefully we can do that. Sounds good. <laughs> we'll, we'll document it in May. At the, we just uh, got, yeah. Doesn't yeah, we just got that email. <laughs> Save the dates for the, yeah. for oh, the right, May, yeah. May yeah. tournament. That is kind of awesome about the dozen is that it's like the one, it's the great unifier of yeah. all of Barstool. Like everyone comes together yep. for that one thing. Like not even like the company meetings or anything does everyone come into one spot to do but yep. it doesn't turn them in everyone's it's, there by the way it may take place not the steamrollers to make it doesn't i there's a chance the set is going to be built on the rundown set this year so oh. you're going to be doing it in front oh, of Jesus. everybody oh that's pressure i don't need that <laughs> yeah. wow well uh we'll see that's coming in may uh, it's Oscar week. The Oscars is on Sunday. I don't know. What's the, Jeff, what's the latest on the Oscars, Ken Jack? The, like, the, the ratings are down. Do people still watch it? Last year was obviously huge, but um, we're doing Oscars today. I mean, yeah. I guess they, they, they could use Will Smith slapping someone mm-hmm. again, I guess. That's that was, like, that was already a year ago? Holy mm-hmm. fuck. Mm-hmm. I, I think, I feel like Kirk, I'm no Ken, but you agree. Kirk, you definitely agree. We've talked about this. If, like, if Top Gun was about to win best picture i do think the hype would be crazier like i think there actually would be some hype here because it's like if you have two billion dollar movies nominated for best picture this year that's pretty fucking rare and neither mm. but the thing is not even if it was going to win but if it was even in the conversation that's the thing yeah. neither one of those movies avatar nor top gun or even it's going to be everything everywhere all at once probably which was a fine whatever you know didn't make a big it did okay but nobody's talking about it. and the other thing is everything's so segmented now it doesn't even really matter, but you're right. Like if Cruz had been nominated and Top Gun, I'm, I'm not wild about it, but if it had been nominated for Best Picture and was in the mix right now, I do think probably the 40, 50-year-olds who have stopped watching the Oscars, some might tune in because, I mean, those are the people who went to see it, so you're probably right. There's got to be a separate award show. Like they need to bring back like the Spike TV Guys Choice Award or something like that because there needs to be one that popular like popular movies can have more of a footprint in because this is still, like the Oscars is still an industry award show which people try to like prop up as being something that should be more popular movies than it really is, which is like, it makes it difficult to kind of advertise that to the, the, you know, the regular layman. That makes sense. Yeah. You're right. Cause guys I think that's going to be, so today's the Oscar snub draft, as you probably read in the title, uh, you get one actor, actress, picture, director, and one song, uh, doesn't have to be nominated. It could be nominated and didn't win, but it could be anybody. Um, but I think the hardest thing I'm going to have, here is not knowing a lot of the ones that won and arguing against it, you know, because like you just yeah. said, it's yes. not really the ones that people watch. So we'll see. Yeah, I think the one, it, uh, sorry, I think that we'll, we'll see the most is when I was taking my notes is that it's sort of these enormous performances that are still talked about in movies and lines that are still discussed today and right. versus the picture or the actor who actually won it. And I'm in the movie, so I know them. But if you ask a hundred people on the street, have you seen this movie in the last 30 years or had a conversation about it? The answer will be no. But the person who was snubbed or the film or the director of the song, everyone would know it. And, they, and that's been the problem with the Academy Awards. For, like, you know, the movie came out last year called Tar, which I like very much. Uh, Kate Blanchett is probably going to win Best Actress for it. Statistically, nobody, not a human being, saw it. So, I mean, I don't know. But, like, it's the best performance, I think. So she should probably win. But you're right. 
Ken Jack. Like so there should be some way to recognize a movie that made eighty million dollars, so people watching television will actually know what movie that was because nobody saw that movie. Even the Fablemans, which Steven Spielberg directed, made like fifteen million. Cocaine Bear made more its first like weekend a gazillion, than the Fablemans yeah. did. Oh, yeah. like so. There has to be some way to figure that out, and I think I think they're trying with more nominations now. More movies are nominated for Best Picture this year. Ten were in the past. You know, until recently it was five. But even that hasn't really led yeah. to much of a solution. So they're still trying. I mean, the ratings. If Will Smith didn't slap Chris Rock last year, nobody would have watched it. And this year, no one is going to watch the Academy. Nobody's going to watch the Academy Awards. We're thinking there's they, no way it happens twice, right? But I don't know. Like, I mean, can you imagine? I'm sure that'll be a great bit they throw out there. That'll oh, be, yeah. that'll be very. Oh, fun. they right. they won't right. beat that into the ground at all. I'm sure. Right. But yeah. on I, Kirk's point, for that exact reason, I will be sticking mostly to uh, movies that like 99 out of those hundred people have seen. It looks like you're wearing a Fantastic Four beanie, Dave. Uh, this is Good. a actually. I'll shout them out. This is Sorry, the so Andrew draft. Wisher Foundation. Uh, That's the foundation we work with at Barstool Chicago. Um, they raise money for pediatrics battling cancer, and we cut checks awesome. every year. So I like how you had to struggle whether or not you're going to shout out a pediatric cancer <laughs> foundation. You're like, oh, I don't know if I need to give these guys free press. <laughs> Got to make sure first. Big Fantastic Four Foundation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's what it was. Um, all right, then we could just hop into it. Uh, let's do the order now. Um, Kirk, uh, our producer, Harry, has a number one through five. Uh, what number do you think it is? Two. No. Ken Jack. It's a, what, you sure? <laughs> Four. <laughs> no. Jeff. Three. Yes. What, what uh, slot do you want, Jeff? Yeah, I'm going to go first. First. All right. Um, White Sox, Dave, one through four. One. Yes. I'll go. I'll go five. All right. Uh, to me, one through three. I'm gonna go three. Yes. Uh, I'll take second. Uh, one or two, Kirk. Two. Yes. Uh, four, third or fourth, Kirk. Which slot? Do you I'll go. Want? I'll go in the middle. I'll go third. All right. So Ken Jack, that puts Wait. you in the fourth slot. Like um, that. That's a good spot. Okay. So one more time, going through it. Oscar snubs does not have to just be nominated. Could be anybody, actor, actress, picture, director. And song. It's but, basically it's basically snubbed from winning. So yes, it's yeah. correct. Nominated, not yeah, okay, correct. Uh, is okay. it is it only lead actor and actress Eddie, or is it supporting actor and supporting actress? I think we said lead. Okay, uh, okay. yeah, I think that. So we'll keep it. Lead. Yeah, keep it yeah. easy that gotcha. way. Okay, yeah, we'll keep okay. it lead. Um, but yeah, thank you, Jeff. Jeff was a co commissioner on this one. He helped me out, so we were. Uh, we we well, we just did this on LCB a few weeks ago. We did like mm. a, so. I was like, I didn't want to. Yeah. No, it's good. Our same boring takes. But to be clear, we can do like we said. If a, if somebody wasn't nominated, yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. Gotcha. Okay. Uh -huh. um, good. All right then. Uh, congrats to Tommy Smokes as well for winning last week. And yeah, uh, squeak. <laughs> uh, before we get into it, I, I didn't. The SNL. I got killed by the way, and I, I I thought I had a great strategy, but I just think people just weren't as. I don't know. I, I think I went too old. I don't know what I did. You didn't have the popcorn ones. You didn't draft yeah. Brian Fellows. Yeah, exactly. I wanted Chris Farley in the third round so fucking bad to say I had the greatest steal of all time. I almost got it. All right, anyway. Almost. Um, before we get into it, let's talk about our friends at Game Time. Game Time is the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. It's created by fans for fans. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. They crack the code on how to score deals on last minute tickets. It's possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. Uh, White Sox, Dave, last week you went to the Blackhawks game, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I decided to pick up, go to a Hawks game last Thursday. So Good like, seats. Fire them up. Yeah. Price Good drop seats, right? at I the mean, end. Honestly, they're going to be paying us to go to those games soon. That's how bad they were. But um, for the time being, just fire up game time. Well, even then, you're not going to get. In for, you're going to need to find cheap tickets, and the yeah, way to exactly. do that, go to Hawks games, and obviously MLB is right around the corner. Yep. So make sure you got that game time app downloaded, away. ready to go. The purchase process takes just two taps and ten seconds, and once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. No printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text so you can get into the game seamlessly. Skip the hassle and enjoy the moment. Download the Game Time app or go to the website, enter your email, and redeem code DOGWALK for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. All right, let's get back into it. 
All right, Jeff, lead us off. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go picture. Uh, I have a long list here. Um, there's so many. It truly is. It, it's an unbelievable list. But I'm going to go with one that was snubbed from a nomination. This is this is such a – Ken Jack already knows what I'm about to pick. This is such a oh, yeah. crowd-pleasing pick. I'm starting to leg up on this vote. Didn't get nominated. It changed the process. They went from five to ten, the Dark Knight. Um, uh, the Dark Knight <laughs> is is an all-time Oscar snub. Wasn't nominated for Best Picture. Uh, there's a couple here I could I could pick that were nominated and didn't win. There's two in particular, which I'll talk about. I'm sure they get picked. But The Dark Knight, when it comes to snubs, to me, always like one of the, the, the poster boys for a snub. Wait, wait, wait. Um, Hold on. You said it didn't even get nominated? Nope. No, did not get nominated. That's no nomination. wild to me. That's it, the and they, biggest they movie of the last 20 years, maybe. Five, one of them. And they changed it, and part of the controversy was there, and it didn't do anything. <laughs> like, they just, right. it was like, they're going to start nominating more of these types of movies. They didn't. Like, they didn't at all. Black Panther was the, the first one to really break that ground uh, when it got nominated. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go The Dark Knight off the top. Yeah. I mean,. Certainly, it's fucking Slum Slum Dog. What's the, any any argument? I for love Slum Dog too. Okay. I like Slum Dog. Oh, great right movie! Me. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, it's also a kind of a dog shit Oscar nominated year anyway. Like, that was a bad year. It, yeah. it, it's not a great year. I mean, how that didn't now today, if that movie came out, got those reviews, and even if there were only five movies nominated, that would get nominated today. Oh yeah, without a question. And Nolan would probably get nominated today. Like oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. That is. But you're right. Like that. All of a sudden, conversation was we have to nominate ten movies. It's not even nominated ten movies, and you know, like all quiet in the Western Front gets nominated. So this is not solving <laughs> yeah. any any television viewing issues. But yeah, that's a good pick. I actually did not know that this is what changed everything, and that's why there's more nominations. Did a bunch of people it was a year after that? Yeah. Oh. Wow. And then they went to, and the funny thing is, we skipped over. They went to a, a stupid rule change. They were like, okay, now it doesn't have to be ten; it could just right. be an arbitrary number. Yeah. And now it's back to ten. It's just like. Why? So, no organization's better at not figuring it out than the. Academy. Oh no, so they got no fucking clue what's going on. Yeah, it's 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 a great movie. I mean, it it transcended just comic books, so that's that's mm. all there is to it. Top to bottom, it is yeah. awesome. Um, mm -hmm. All right, it's to me. I'm gonna stay with picture. Um, I think this is one of the ones Jeff was referencing to. It's an all time classic. People say it's the greatest movie of all time. I'm gonna go with Goodfellas. Yep. Mm, yeah. It was nominated. Uh, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need Kirk or one of you guys to tell me about Dances with Wolves because I have not. Seen oh, it. what a I great! Could, movie. I can tell you, but it absolutely sucks. It sucks <laughs> how? What the shit? What are you talking Kevin about? Kevin Costner has the worst. Uh, first of all, I hate narration anyway in movies generally. He has the worst narration. He's got this flat yes. California accent. He's like, yeah, man, it's a real bummer what's going on with the Indians, man. Like, it's not fair. It's a fucking terrible movie. Oh, I'm my a Kevin Costner guy. Goodfellas is one of the I don't know. 10 greatest films ever made in America uh, for it not to win. Like, well, I, I know if you like it, Dave, that's great. But to our conversation uh, earlier, let's pull 50 people uh, off the street. I think, say, oh, that's a Costner time, movie. That's, I think most was, people When was seen, the last time you saw Goodfellas versus when was the last time you saw Dances with Wolves? That's fair. They're all, I mean, it's not even close. It's, it's, it's one of not only greatest crimes in Oscar history, it's one of the greatest crimes in history, period. Mm -hmm. Top five worst things ever done to humanity, I would say. Hell it was yes. my number two behind Dark Knight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, I think. Name, I, had, I had a second in my as well. Yeah, that's a great pick. I would that's have had awesome it first. Pick. I'm not trying to say that Dances with Wolves deserve that Oscar over Goodfellas. I just really, really like that movie. I love Costner, too. I'm in the middle of Yellowstone right now. It's but so Goodfellas boring. not winning Best Picture is the fucking craziest thing on the planet. It's it's ridiculous. It truly it was ridiculous. also crazy. It was also crazy. Like so, at that point, I was super into movies. I was about sixteen at the time. It was also crazy at the time. Like this isn't retrospect. Like at the time, people were like, "What the fuck is going on here? Like, why is this happening? What do we, what do we do? we know in the moment we're making a gigantic mistake?" Really, that's mm -hmm. interesting because it was born the year I it was it came out the year I was born. So I like I don't even know that in real I time. I watched in high school for the first time. I don't know if that was the same experience for you or Jeff or White Sox Dave, but that's where I, we had to watch it across the course of like a goddamn week because it's so it's long for me. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, my dad yeah. showed it to me on VHS. It's his favorite movie. He's like, <laughs> "Son, you're old enough now." Like hop on the couch, we're watching a movie together, and it's one of my. It was like eight movies VHS tips because it couldn't fit. Yeah, it all I think one. it was two. Yeah, it was two. <laughs> uh, like Titanic, kind of. It's a masterpiece. Yeah, I it's, think yeah, it, it's a masterpiece. Know, it goes without saying how good Goodfellas and the, is. So. And the music, the 
like how he scores each scene. It's, it's there's not a single flaw with that movie. Although I will say, you know what? I'll take that back. When he's running from the helicopter, eh, it kind of gets a little boring to me. Okay, <laughs> but whatever. Nit, nitpick, Dave. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if I'm gonna nitpick, that would be it. But it's nine nine out of ten. Thank you. <laughs> the Layla uh, scene still always gets me. That's my favorite. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, it's, so it's great. Frankie uh, Carbone. Kirk, you are up. Yeah, so I, mean, I would say Goodfellas for me is probably the second, maybe the second greatest American film or third greatest American film ever made. It's the second best mafia movie ever made. Uh, the first one was The Godfather, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, who did not win Best Director that year for that film. That went to a guy named Bob Fosse for a movie you guys all love called Cabaret, which I know you guys get together <laughs> and watch frequently. So, I mean, the idea that, I mean, to even understand what American film was like before The Godfather, it's... It's like, you know, before cars were invented, then one day cars showed up. It just changed everything. Uh, it's, I mean, I'll talk about how great The Godfather is. And the guy who directed it lost to Bob Fosse, not a bad director, who made a musical that nobody has watched in the world in the last 30 years. I mean, The Godfather is the greatest American film of all time. And the one best picture, one best actor for Brando. Uh, and the director for it, who is really the reason, if you, if you read, the book just came out last year about which was great. What he went through to make it is insane. And to not win Best Director for that movie is mind-numbing. I, I still can't believe it. It's funny. What you said about The Dark Knight holds true for that. Like, if he was nominated right now for The Godfather, it's not a category we'd even be talking about. It'd be such, no, it's such a slam shoot. dunk win that you wouldn't right. even bat an eye at it. Right. And he is the star of the film. Like, it, it doesn't, if somebody else directs it, it's not even, you could put other people in it. It wouldn't be as good. But if anybody else directed that movie, it wouldn't even be you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even know about it. We wouldn't talk about it. It wouldn't even exist. Mm -hmm. That's a great pick. Yeah, top to Bob bottom. Fossey, great oh, choreographer. I that. I do, now I'm thinking of people who watch The Godfather and don't like it. I'm getting a lot. Okay. Uh, different show, different argument, I'll different take. show. Dave, was there anything uh, that you could nitpick on Coppola's job on The Godfather? Oh yeah, I'd be curious. <laughs> I. It's not like Goodfellas because Goodfellas. I mean. It is on TV constantly, not constantly The Godfather. I've only seen The Godfather a handful of times, and it is a, you got to set aside some time for those movies, obviously. Goodfellas, I've seen one billion times, but I would I would need to watch, I haven't watched The Godfather in years now. It's been probably 10 years since I've watched it. Um, but it's, it's. I mean, it's, it's. there's a reason it's, it's revered as one of the all-time great films, so not really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for something just like, oh, I didn't like the way Luca Brasi went out or something <laughs> yeah. like that. The orange uh, hints were a little tacky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't need it. it. It was a little... Uh... <laughs> didn't need it. Um, Ford Coppola, good pick. Uh, Ken Jack, you're up. Um, I don't want to pick any of the ca like the good categories. Like Obviously, I'm a man, and I want to have like 5,000 picks for best actor. I only have like three for best actress. It's my weakest category, so I want to get that out of the way like, as soon as I can. I would go with um, Amy Adams for Arrival. Mm. I think Amy Adams in Arrival was easily the best actress that year, although it's it, you you could say like Emma Stone who won for La La Land that year she was awesome as well i think the job if you're just looking at who was the better actress in their movie and who had the harder job i think it was definitely Amy Adams so i want to get her as quick as possible one of my favorite movies Denny Villeneuve who obviously directed a bunch of movies that i'm sure you guys love as well um and she just killed it she was so so good in it and got to get her off the board cuz again my field is just so deep for best actress and best song so got to get those two out of the way I think she's, it's crazy. Like, you don't think about her much. You don't, I think she has six nominated. Is that right? She has five or six. Crazy. I think she's been nominated for six Oscars, Amy Adams. I think American that's right. Hustle. Uh, she's, she's starting to, she's starting to rival uh, Glenn, Glenn Close. Close. Glenn yeah. Close. Yeah. She's, she's younger, but yeah, she's going to be nominated like probably 12 times in her career. Or something. And she's probably going to win for a role that's significantly worse than Yeah, she stinks in it or something. Yeah, terrible movie. That's how it goes. Yeah. That's what happened with uh, Jessica Chastain, kind of. Like, she was awesome in so many great, like, other great movies. And then, like, oh, Eyes of Tammy Faye. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, she was fine. Yeah, Amy Adams is on my list, too. I, I, have, I have three lot, like, stone cold ones on here. She was on there. Mm -hmm. I just need to get out of the way. I love that movie. Amy Adams' Arrival. I haven't seen it, so can't really weigh in. Dave, I take it you have not seen it. I have either. not seen it, no. So, but it was uh, on I every list. single list I, like, BuzzFeed. That you looked at? Yeah. Okay. So I'm sure she killed it. Um, yeah, she's 0 for six on Academy Awards. That's crazy. That's gotta be, that's gotta be pretty fucking annoying. <laughs> Junebug, doubt the fighter. She was so good in the fighter and the master. She was awesome American, in that movie. So good. American Hustle and then Vice. Vice, like, and eh, whatever. American Hustle. <laughs> American Hustle. 
and right. whatever. But like the master, the fighter, doubt, and Junebug to a lesser degree, like all amazing for uh, performances from her. Yeah, she's good. Um, all right, White Sox, Dave, last first rounder. Okay, uh, I only as I had three best actresses as well. This one I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Kate Winslet Titanic. She did not win. Um, I'm taking it more solely based on like so that movie came out in '97, correct? Yep. So I was I would have been nine years old, and um, I that was the first time in my life I can remember a movie just it was in every headline. Everybody was talking about it. And I like just sh on sheer shock alone that she didn't win it. Not saying it was necessarily the best performance. It was like the talk of every conversation. It was the subject of every conversation. So I'm going with her based because I don't really like my other choice that I have for best actress. But um, she still crushed it in that role. She, I mean, it was her coming out party, if I recall correctly, right? That's not your biggest first movie. I mean, she'd been yeah. nominated. She'd been nominated for Sense and Sensibility before that, but that was definitely like her for mainstream. Right, yeah, yeah. mainstream yeah, popularity. Oh my God, yeah, there's no. Yeah, it was a. Uh, I mean, she was only like eighteen or nineteen years old, wasn't she? In the uh, movie, maybe. Yeah, maybe a little older, but yeah, I don't know. Let's see who won that year? And was it ninety eight? I guess it was uh, Helen Hunt and as good as, as, as it gets, gets right? Yeah. Good as that's gets? another okay, movie I haven't seen forever. She's really good in that. That's fair. Yeah. No, Winslet she would have been like 47. I math is just not. She's about my age. She would have been like 22, 23 at that. She was, yeah, yeah, 22. She was, she was a kid. Yeah. She was young, young, young. So yeah, I'm going that based on just more shock value than her performance itself. But um, that's not to say she didn't also crush it. It was one of my favorite movies. Still, I love that movie. Um, and go ahead and rip on me for that. Well, that movie what? features an almost incomprehensibly like bizarre Billy Zane, like his character is like so evil that you're like, and so dumb. At one point in the movie, he's like, what painting is this? Picasso? Who is this man, Picasso? I'm like, is this guy really like, how much stupider can we make this guy? But other than that, it's fine. I mean, like she does, she does, she does famously like just basically let Leonardo DiCaprio die. Like she could have yeah. let him on the fucking thing. They did that on Mythbusters, I think. Like, could she have oh, let him true. on the board? I mean, they could, have, they could have swapped or something. I don't know. Like, yeah, just nobody. switch in and out, do some push-ups on the board, get your blood yeah. blood flowing a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, I put the coat on her. Classic line. Yeah, I wrote a blog the very first week we went full-time, the most punchable characters in movie history. Just guys that I just want to punch in the face, and he was on it. I fucking hate <laughs> that guy. He's just so punchable. Yeah, he was a It dick. was him and Joey so, Dahmer. Is that his name? Joey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer? Don Joey Donner from, oh, uh, from uh, oh. 10 Things I Hate About yeah. You. Yeah. I just oh, want to punch that guy. It's a good one. Um, and for my wraparound, um, I'm going to go director. This is a top five favorite movie of mine. And as you guys can tell over there, I'm not exactly a cinephile. Um, I'm going to go Tarantino with Pulp Fiction. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure that was a monster year for movies, right? Great choice. The yeah. It was on my list. Yeah. She should not have won. The Meccas won in the dopey. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's a good pick, Dave, for sure. That was, Great wait, pick. Pulp Fiction year was... 90s. That's Forrest Gump. Four? Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, so, I mean, it's tough competition, so I don't even know if you can consider it a snub, yeah. but oh, any should, other no, year... He, no, he definitely should have no, that's not, that yeah. tough. I, I, I think that movie's just... I love that movie. And I'm not... I'm, the plot, how it bounces back and forth, it's it's one of my all-time favorite movies. Top five favorite movie of mine. A good pick. Winston Great Wolf. Pick. You So you don't think there's any debate there with Forrest Gump and Pulp Fiction, Kirk? I mean, I don't want to get too into, I don't know what that other people have in terms of snubs and stuff, but I'll say that year, there are other movies. Sure. First of all, there's another movie that was nominated that year that resonates more now than either one of them um, that was nominated for Best Picture that year. But, like, th that's another movie that was, like, a, a zeitgeist, like, change in how films were made. Like, Pulp Fiction changed the game, like, entirely. I, I mean, I kind of hate Forrest Gump, so I'm probably not My the best. My parents hate it, too. I don't get it. I love that movie. My parents yeah. fucking love it. It's a, it's a fine it. movie. Care for it. it's, it's not a best picture. It's not a best picture. That's the bottom line, I think. It's fine movie, definitely not best picture. Yeah, maybe hate is strong. Yeah, but it's just it, it, like I, it's I mean, a classic I, of that era best picture window. That is the funny thing. It's like yeah, it just lines up with the type of shit that one. Right. Somebody learns. But you know what, Eddie, I think one of the big reasons Zemeckis won that year was everyone thought the technology at that point, like, oh, Forrest Gump's talking to Linda. If you watch it out, it looks horrible. Yeah. At the time, it was brand new to insert, like, oh, my God, Tom X is, like, sitting with John Lennon on Dick Cabot. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tarantino is doing all these – I mean, but, yeah, that's – I think that's a good pick. I actually had that on my list as well at some point. I was going to – Great pick, Dave. Thank right. you. So, Tarantino, Pulp Fiction off the board. 
Uh, Ken Jack, you're up next. I was a little nervous next. I was about to get roasted for those two. No. I picked Win Winslet by default just because I... Actress is tough, yeah. 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 Actress was Kind of had to. They, they usually, they pick really good performances for the most part across Best Actress. Like, I, I was just going through the list of all the winners. They're mostly, like, the right picks, I would say. But so that's why it was harder, to, I think, to find good ones. I just said I was. Um, I, this isn't tipping a pick because it's a TV show. I'm watching Yellowstone right now. Beth, what's her real name? I what, think Beth, Riley. I think is it Beth? Right? Yeah, it's something Riley. I know that she's. I didn't know she was British for one. Great job acting. Uh, for two, <laughs> I think it's one of the best female acting performances I've seen in a long time. She's how fucking many, fantastic. Just a yeah. evil bitch. It's how awesome. many British actors do you think Dave doesn't know are British? I didn't know Andrew Garfield was until like years after Social Network came out. He gave like it might have been an Oscar speech or something. And that he, one, I was by like, the way, we can we can talk about that. Not gonna, that's a supporting. That, him not getting supporting nominations, that's one that always surprised Crazy. Me. I yeah. Oh, for, social, for a social network or for, Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Garfield you know, Social Network, yeah. Did you know Tom Hanks is British, Dave? Mm -hmm. I did. I did, did know that one. Good. Good. <laughs> um, uh, Brad Pitt is too, actually. Um, I knew Brad that. Pitt is from uh, Northern Ireland, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's orange. He's good, he has the pikey accent. He that does. <laughs> Uh, Ken Jack, you're up. Before you make your pick, though, I do want to talk about ChevyDriveChicago.com. Yeah, so Chevy Drive Chicago, you all saw your favorite Chevys last month at the auto show. Now it's time to drive a new Chevy home. ChevyDriveChicago.com makes it easy for you to shop the showroom and see every detail on every model. You can also build the price in, uh, you, could, you could also build and price out your dream ride and find your local dealer with a simple click. It's nice, it's a nice feature on the website. David. I like that. I like that. So go to ChevyDriveChicago.com, check that out. They got the tracks. They got the Blazer, the Trailblazer. Uh, we also- We were in these cars. Yep. These are all very nice cars. Exactly, I was very impressed with the Equinox. Mm -hmm. Equinox is very solid, um, so go check that out. The um, the Traverse is super nice too. It's got those captain chairs. You were talking about how you're trading in your car for that new Corvette. Yeah, the new Corvette. You were taking pictures of that Corvette. I, I, I that. wanted to get in it. I just I didn't want to touch it because that thing is worth in my entire life. It's a lot of money, Dave. But it's a lot of money. Beautiful car. Yep. So shop, click, and drive at ChevyDriveChicago.com today, and uh, grab yourself a new Chevy. Why don't you just get your oil change, tires rotated, all that good stuff. ChevyDriveChicago.com. Ken Jack, who you got? All right. Again, I want to get my weaker categories out of the way early because I have enough depth in the other ones. Um, so best original song is my next weakest category. I want to grab um, Listen from Dreamgirls by Beyonce. It's an amazing, incredible original song. And the winner that year was some song from An Inconvenient Truth by Melissa Etheridge. <laughs> just... A fucking stinker of a song and listen is so good like an incredibly well put together song among like i think like three songs from dream girls that got nominated that year so many great ones but listen i think is my favorite on that entire track um and the fact that it didn't win in that dumpy al gore bullshit did it's just it's 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 not i hate it i hate it and i want to get listen this off the board as soon as i can there's a couple songs when I was throwing through songs that I, I laughed. There's one I laughed out loud at. I completely forgot I got nominated for it. I think it's a goofy. going to pick it. I'm, I'll save it for yeah. the end. It's, it's, it's the goofiest cool. category, I think, of all. Like, when you look at it, they <laughs> yeah. never figure it out. They're starting to get better, I think, now. But, boy, oh, for, for years when I was a kid, They're, it was wild. The best was the year a couple years ago. They only had two nominees. Yeah. 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 My favorite two, one. three. It's, and they change the rules within it all the time. It's crazy. It was like Rango versus somebody and the other guy. I forget who the right. other one was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was fucking I'm Rio assuming nobody's versus... picking Rango. Yeah, was... uh, no, I, I'm not. <laughs> Damn, dude. That inconvenient truth won? For best original song, a song by Melissa Etheridge, what, a dumpy song. Of... What was her other song in the she had two songs, right? In like 93, 94 that were like radio monsters. Oh yeah, she had like what was that? I want to come over. That's and, what it was. Uh, I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couple. So, whatever. I'm, I I have to. You know, you can yell me for for like tip picking if I'm doing it. But two years ago, the Academy did something they'd never done before. They made the Best Actor award the last award of the night. Well, that was rough. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was rough. Yeah. Um, and they're going to give him this posthumous award. I mean, this whole thing, and he didn't win. Anthony Hopkins won. It was it insanely awkward. A couple years. He ago, wasn't even there. They just they just Lady showed his Gaga, picture. Lady Gaga performed a song on stage. The vice president, Joe Biden, at the time, came out and introduced her. All these abuse victims walked out on stage. She sang the song. They linked hands. They held their hands up high. And it's this incredible, powerful moment. 
And then they turned around and they gave it to Sam Smith Bond song. <laughs> my favorite. Like, <laughs> it's like one of the most that hated is... James Bond songs, too. It's, it, it was so unbelievable. It was like the it was like the Spectre one. It wasn't even like the Skyfall. Yeah. It wasn't Skyfall. Yeah. Was they dope. just did that with a song from Selma, uh, mm, Glory. Glory. Common and Jolly. It was a great moment at the Oscars. A really cool, powerful performance. And then it won. And then people were. Cr- That's the Chris Pine was crying. That's that met. Oh, right, Chris right, Pine right. Cr- mm. And this, they tried to do it again with the Lady Gaga. It didn't hit. It, did, it didn't land. It was it was so Tough. awkward. They can't read the room, man. Tough. They're good at that. Oh, That's why I don't terrible. watch these fucking shows. They can't read the room. I can't get enough. Oh, <laughs> they make, them, like, they make me cringe, all these assholes. Yeah. <laughs> all right, listen by Dreamgirls off the board. Kirk, you're back up. Okay, so I will go actress as well, and I'm going to go with somebody who wasn't nominated, should have been, um... And that's Uma Thurman for Kill Bill. Yeah. Mm. Oh, um, I feel like pick. today for really sure pick. she would get nominated. She carries, you know, un- I don't know if it hurt that it was split in a half. Maybe if it was one big movie. I-, I just think back then they would not have nominated. If you go through the nominees that year, it's, you know, sort of your typical uh, Charlize Theron won for wearing makeup, right? For that movie, Monster, fine. She was mm-hmm. fine. But like Dan Keaton was nominated for Something's Gotta Give. She did nothing new in that movie. No. Uh, Naomi Watts, Tony McGrath, which is a good performance, but like, it, it, there's no, again, like, that's the movie, that's a performance that by far is most remembered and should be. She carries that movie. She's great in that movie. I can't picture another actress at that time in that movie. Again, Tarantino. Um, great performance, and, you know, I, sort of, no way today, I don't think that that, that is not nominated. Mm, that's an awesome pick. I didn't even think about that. Damn. Yeah. That's like one of the most iconic female, I would say actually the singular most iconic female action character ever other than maybe Eileen Ripley, and that's it. Right. Who, who, some actress said a few months ago that they were first to the action genre. I forget who this was. It was in the news, and there was a bunch of oh yeah um, people on Twitter. It wasn't Jennifer Lawrence, I don't think. For It was somebody, and they were like, basically I invented the, this, and everyone was like. And it's that probably Gal Gadot or something. Some, yeah, and Uma Thurman trended for like a while on, was trending on Twitter, and that was why, because she, I mean, that character, and she's great in those scenes. She's great in the scenes with Bill. She's great in the scenes with her kid. Like, she's just, mm-hmm. just you know, totally nailed it. Tour de force. There's yeah. ever been one. For sure. I got to watch that movie again. I, it's, I've seen it one time. I was in college, and I remember thinking it was my least favorite Tarantino work. Yeah. Well, but I got to give know. it another shot. For sure. He's never seen, uh, what was it? What was the R- Rodriguez one? Um, Death, uh, not Death, Death Race. Proof? Death Proof, Death Rate. Yeah, Wait, Death with Proof. Michelle oh, yeah. Rodriguez? Oh, yeah. 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 I think she's a horrific actress. Oh, oh Robert, dude, that's Rick. Robert Rodriguez, Robert. his director. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen it. You're probably a big Spy Kids guy, I would imagine. Oh, Can't. yeah. Mm-mm. Dave? Nope. No? Dust Till Dawn? Nope. Yeah, that, that movie's funny, Dust, Dust Till Dawn, because uh, Quentin Tarantino was in it, and he, he was like an actor in the actual movie, and he made a point to have Salma Hayek in the movie and have a whole scene where she, she plays a stripper in it, and she pours liquor all, down her leg onto her foot into his mouth, and like like with her foot in his mouth. It is yeah, That's a hell like of a movie. Feet. Feet gross me out. It's a good pick. Oh, if- not him. He loves feet. Yeah, just Tarantino. Oh, he oh, loves he, them. Is he? He's oh, a yeah. weirdo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All of his movies are... Big foot. Oh, you'll notice it now. I'm sure. Now, yeah, now I'll be looking movie. for it mm-hmm. for sure. I've said, I've said this before on my show. I hate feet so much. I don't know, Dave. Who's the woman in the world you find most attractive? I don't know. Throw out um, uh, Margot Robbie since okay, we're on sure. movie characters. If, if movie you're actresses. in front of her, if you're if the two of you are there and you're wearing shoes, and she's barefoot, I would definitely have intercourse with you first. I hate feet that much. That's, no, that's really. saying that's something. Ten, that is very much saying something. Ten times out of ten. It's not even a feet. Yeah, feet are, feet are disgusting. Hate feet. I hate feet. The worst. The worst. So do you not? Do you never wear, like, flip-flops or anything, Kirk? No, don't, Eddie. I don't even, I don't even like saying it. I don't like the – I hate summer. I hate – <laughs> I'm not a – I hate when people uh, – I don't – look, everyone has a fetish. I'm not I'm knocking yeah, it. Go, it's go the for thing it. that I – I hate the toes. Like, yeah, I don't know. What's the part of the foot? And, yeah. What's a – What's the part of the foot from like sort of the center of the foot? What's that? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But oh, the like toes arch or something, yeah. Yeah, the middle, I don't know, but yeah, he, yeah, heels and toes. That you know what? You're right. Cuz I've never yeah. really like thought what specifically about feet make me sick. Toes. It's the gross. it's the heels and gross. toes. Yeah, and I love Ray guy. Ugh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> there's certain yeah, there's certain people that I think you'd get along with then. Uh who's Jersey Jerry's a big foot guy, right? If I'm yes. remembering correctly. Mm-hmm. Sounds right. That sounds yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes <laughs> massive foot guy. 
That's he perfect. is. He like I, I was watching one time. He's like, here's the way. He says like the purest form foot for a woman is the white nail polish. That's how you could really judge them. <laughs> what do you think? Kurt, you've never given a thousand women a thousand foot massages? No. You don't got your technique down and everything. <laughs> That's his version of like eating something with a gold spoon. Is he's like, yeah, the white the white nail polish needs to be on it. There's only pure experience of a foot. That's I found that interesting. Fascinating. I didn't know that was the in the foot guy playbook. Oh yeah. Um, okay, Jeff said his power went out. He'll be back in a second. It's to me. So that was a big run on actresses. I have one on my board that I really want and I need, and I'm worried Jeff's going to take it on the wraparound. So I'm going to go with it right now. Um, I'm going to go with Toni Collette in Hereditary. I saw a lot. Yeah, a lot of people have mentioned her before. Yeah, she's great in that. It was phenomenal. I think she's one of the best out there in general. She got nominated for... The Sixth Sense, I know, yep. and I thought in this movie it just put it to shame because she was she was that good. Have you seen this one, Kirk? Yeah, she's great in it. She's great. She's like one of the great. She's not American, Dave. She's one oh, of the she's great. Australian. Um, she's Australian. Yeah, she's, she's one of the great sort of. I wouldn't say unknown, but sort of so under the radar. Way more now, a lot more streaming and Netflix stuff she's done the last few years. But yeah, she's great in that. Great, and I don't even think. I don't even think people were even talking about her getting nominated that year, if I remember correctly. There's not a lot of buzz. That's something with horror movies. I feel like they're so true. like dismissive of horror stuff, even though like that was really just kind of like a drama with like sort of horror elements to it. But man, she was she killed that movie. Really, really good in it. Sixth Sense. Honestly, I would say like that's even, definitely a horror movie. That movie still no, scares. No, we're it. talking Hereditary. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, Jeff is back. Jeff, I took Tony Collette in Hereditary. Okay. What the fuck, Jeff? Are you in Austin? Power. No. I was going to say, I, mean, her, uh, I guess they're getting a deep freeze down there. So we had an ice storm in Austin. I was putting trees in my mom's neighborhood. Um, okay. You took Tony Collette. Yeah. And I, I should say, too, if you've never seen this movie, go watch it. There's a scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is. I don't even know how to describe it. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But you'll know what scene I'm talking about. Yeah. Shocking. Put it that way. And she fucking knocks it out of the park. There's honestly, I think you could even um, move that same like sentiment over to to Midsummer as well. Like, there's performances in that movie that I think are like insane too. Obviously, Florence Pugh like amazing in that. Not as great as Colette in Hereditary. But there's a lot of performances in that that are amazing. Yeah, I, I got. He's uh, the director. Ari Aster's got a new movie coming out this year called yeah. uh, Bo is Afraid. A24 movie coming out in April. I've seen that. But it's like a it's described as a surrealist comedy horror movie with, with Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, she's incredible. I think she's one of the best going. So uh, happy to get her. Didn't want Jack, Jeff to uh, snag her. So, uh, Jeff, you're up again. Oh, Twice. man, this is tough. Um, director is the toughest thing ever. Yeah. There's an obvious one. There's one I want real bad. Um, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Marty for Goodfellas. Mm um Dances it's the same thing stinks. kirk said it's the same thing kirk said there's really there's, there's, yeah. there's i have nothing else to say that we already talked about goodfellas he lost to zemeckis that's that's just, just unbelievable who won it that um, year robert zemeckis yeah yeah what, what movie is that no uh not not zemeckis oh. sorry kevin costner oh, costner. costner oh sorry. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. i'm wolves. like my wires crossed costner would dance with wolves um yeah there's not much more to say than that it's, it's just it's goodfellas i mean it's like it's like taking the movie too there's another one I really want. So I, I know, what it, know what it is. But I, I, I just, in the end, Goodfellas for me is one of the, it's number two movie ever made for me. It's it's 100 out of 100. I have 10 movies that I have 100 out of 100. That's two for me. I mean, there's a Star Wars bias. Empire Strikes Back to me is perfect. But Goodfellas, is, it's just unbelievable. It's just one of those things where you, it's it's not a trivia question. I guess kind of it is. But it's one of those things where if you, you look back and sometimes you almost forget. You're like, what the fuck? Why did this not like, why, how did this not clean up stuff? Um, Duke, Scorsese it, was who had directed uh, The Color of Money, the, the, the sequel that Newman wound up winning the Oscar for. Cruz is in that. He was really close. I was reading a book with him about him last year. Really close to having Tom Cruise and Madonna as Henry and Karen Hill in that movie. Like, really close. No shit. <laughs> that would yeah. have been crazy. Like, at the at the 10 yard line. Like, it was. Uh, by the way, like, well, I don't want to, but Leo, that was unbelievable in that. Cruise. Watching Cruise in that movie at that time, the Cruise at that time, 
He would have been. I actually think he would have been great. Not as good as Leo. I actually think he he might have Madonna. I don't know, but that might have worked. That what? was right around Born of the Fourth of July, right? Like yeah, he was on, about, like just, really good yeah. in that too. Yeah, in Ra- yeah Rain Man, which he was great in. Like he yeah. was. He was oh, still Tom Cruise is a fantastic that, actor. Wait, well, I, I, he, yeah, he was. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm yeah, sure I'm going to get shit on for this question because I'm sure there's or if. Was Madonna ever in any movies where she was like, like uh, Lady Gaga and what's it fit? What's it called yeah. from a couple? Of, she oh, was Stars Born. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, she was in movies. She was in like a Vita and stuff like that. She was not. She's not a great screen presence. Not like Lady Gaga. Right. That's what I. That's what yeah, I. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, you need one more. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with actor, and this is kind of my standard pick. God, there's if there's two in each of these, I just fucking kill me. I'm not gonna go recent though on this one. I I just think it's I I just think it's the best performance of all time. I need to pull up what won that year. Um I might know, Jeff, if you go. I think because you might be stealing this from me. Uh it's it's my favorite performance of all time. It's an older movie. It's one of those where I bring it up, I tweet about it all the time. I, I'm picking Gene Wilder, um, Willy Wonka. Oh, no, I, no, I, I, it is my it is my favorite performance of all time. I think it's it's uh, when I'm when I think about getting lost in a role and just completely changing everything, there isn't a human being on earth that could be in Willy Wonka and make that movie what it is. I love that movie, but that role, just the, the facial expressions, like like the the sarcasm, his delivery of comedy, wasn't nominated. It's which is crazy. Um, but Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka for me is like the ultimate, like that is a, the definition of just an unbelievable act of performance. There's a couple other ones on here that I love. There's one in particular, that's a more recent movie that I want to talk about definitely, but yeah, Wilder for me is my favorite performance ever. So I, I just, I have to pick it. I have to pick Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka. Mm-hmm. That's a great pick. I'm stunned that wasn't nominated. It's crazy. I, it's just Maybe one of those, those movies that transcends movie. time too. And like eras. Yeah. It, I mean, he, he has one nom. Is that now. right? I may be wrong on that. I actually don't know. No, completely off the top of my head, but he may. Have, I think it's one nom. I mean, he is. I mean, he's obviously uh, rest in peace. A fucking legend beyond. He transcends comedy. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, that that that's my pick there. I'm not saying that he does, Jeff. Was he not uh, supporting for, for producers? Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Yeah. They uh, they got the history of the world part two. I think coming to hulu at some point soon like the series then i think yeah he uh what do you call it um fuck who's history world part, world part one he's so good fuck the guy who made history of the world part one mel brooks, and, brooks. yeah mel brooks is like he made it as yeah. well yeah um and it's with all these other actors probably not going to be as good but kind i love stinker, I think, but yeah. yeah me too <laughs> I, I, know, hope it's, I hope it doesn't but yeah but no I, I mean yeah i think that jeff i think that's the so that came out in 71 right willy wonka yeah is that right yeah so it's been the french connection year so hackman Ooh. with a one but like, I'm sure there's like three nominees in it that, that nobody has ever seen those movies ever. It was so it would have been the 72, would have been 72 Oscars. Give it 71. Oh, it's fucking that's fucking Marlon Brando. So, oh, yeah. oh, oh. oh, is that right? Oh, it's that year. Oh yeah. Bad pick. Like, again, this one you, oh, you this one you lump in the nomination, not even nominated. Yeah. I think it came out in 71, so it actually be the 72 Oscars because Godfather came out in 72. They came out in different years. Oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah. I'm, so it's a it's a French Connection year, I think. So French Connection, Jackman. Peter Finch, Sunday Bloody Sunday, George Walter C. Scott. Matthau, right? Is that that That's a very good George movie. George C. Scott, The Hospital, and yeah. then. George C. Scott, Oscar great George, uh, George C. Scott refused to show up. He called it like a flesh parade or something. Nice, nice. He's like, I'm not showing up to any of these Oscars. This is awesome. It's a big, uh, big catch there. Big catch. That it was French Connection here. <laughs> there you go. It's important to get that historically noted, Eddie. That's what I'm here for. It is. Great movie, too. More people should watch French Connection. <laughs> Keep in mind with that knowledge, Eddie, I've never been called on the dozen trivia as a phone or friend for movies, although I don't think I've ever got one wrong, ever. You should called. absolutely be called. When, when, is, wait, when is airing, Eddie? Uh, this is airing Monday. Yeah, you weren't called for a, a movie question the other night. Oh, Dan like, didn't call me for the right Eugene Levy question, which I knew that was one of those questions I knew the minute like instantaneously. I Wait, Eugene Levy. Like you, you oh. and Nick Terrani have never been called. Two of the most accurate players in the show. Never you and the MVP called. three years. The only three years the freaking league's been in existence. Like, <laughs> well, I get it. You're on an island out there. So you how have, many how many phone a, numbers do you? Phone? How many phone numbers do you have in your like? I don't have your phone number. I text Kirk. with Dan Katz every single day. Well, I mean, okay, Dan, but was, I'm, his, I'm sure his, Dan Brandon. It was, his, but, it was his call. It was his team. 
I would say most people in the company Brandon, and content don't. Dude, have your you're phone just number. you're just the dozen. For some reason, you're just trained to think certain people for categories. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I do the same thing. That is true. That it's is true. weird. It's weird. Also, I don't want anybody to call me, but I find it to be. <laughs> yeah, you, you made a huge mistake. <laughs> yeah, let me make that clear. Don't call. I'm not going to answer. But still, it's, it's it would be nice to, to to be able to reject a phone call from somebody. <laughs> you're battling Eddie, by the way, for MVP this year. Now, just a heads up. Yeah. Let's oh, go. Man. Okay, that's fine. Let's go, Kirk. Big Let's battle. go, Eddie. I'd be honored if Eddie wanted. That'd be fun. Gunning for it. We're trying. Team ZD. There you go. Um, yeah, we're going to have to have Dave start FaceTiming you, though. That's for sure. For, <laughs> yes. Daily. You'll answer him. Yeah. Well, uh, I'd I'm love talking, to have a conversation I'm, with Kirk. No, I'm saying, Port, Kirk I'm saying Portnoy. We're going to, like, now oh, that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, because mm. that's a good <laughs> advantage we have is that everyone picks up. That's uh, nice. I guess I would, yeah. yeah. Somebody DM me that they say, they said, Dave should not be allowed to have a phone a friend. <laughs> they said, everyone will have to pick up because he's their boss. It's an advantage. It's like, like I, I, like, I'm sorry, I can't do that. It's not. <laughs> seems fine. <laughs> anyway. Um, all right, it's back to me. Before I make my pick, I want to talk about Miller Lite. All right, Miller Lite, from fireside conversations to game days. This time of year means more moments with the coolest people in your life. Make these moments even better with Miller Lite, the light beer for people who love beer. Um, listen, you guys know what's this weekend, too. Are we going to be drinking green Miller Lights? This oh, weekend? yeah, that's right. I was, I'm like, wait, what's this weekend? Tis the weekend, everybody, so... Um, get ready, get those Miller lights going. I wonder how much they, how many they sell in Chicago this weekend alone. There's got to be an astronomical amount. So Miller light is brewed for taste. It hits different than other light beers made from simple ingredients. Miller light is for the people who love the taste of beer. Malted barley gives it the rich balanced toffee note flavors and the golden color, you know, and love and a clean finish means it's always refreshing and easy to drink. Go for the beer that invented light beer with 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Miller time is always a good time. It's the original light beer, and it's still the best one. Miller Lite, great taste, 96 calories. Go to MillerLite.com slash redline to find the delivery options near you. Or, let's be honest, it's Miller Lite people. It's pretty much anywhere that they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Um, okay, I'm going to go actor as well. This one's semi-recent, even though... I mean, time is really, I shouldn't even say recent anymore. Time is just flying. Um, it's tough because what won is, is deserving, I think, but I'm going to go with um, Christian Bale, American Psycho. Mm. Um, is that 2000? 2000, yeah. And, uh, so Gladiator? Yeah, Russell, Russell Crowe won. I think that, you know, Leo was always on watch. Like, when's he going to get his Oscar? When is he going to get his Oscar? Yeah, I think Bale loser. is like, Fucking unbelievable, and he needs one now too. Like that conversation. Yeah, well, he should has, be about he's him. got one. Does yeah, he, he have a best actor fight. though? Oh no, no, no. He's got supporting, yeah. and yeah. I think that's one of the all-time great acting jobs in uh, yes. the Fighter. He's yeah. unfucking believable as Dickie Eklund. He's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. Did saying, you guys know he's from Wales? Yes, we did. <laughs> he's a, <laughs> when <laughs> I Dick found Eklund that out though, I was like, whoa. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He got beat by Rami Malek when he was Dick Cheney. That's oh. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now, like threw a threw a mustache on and won the award. Threw a mustache on a lip synced. <laughs> I still haven't seen that movie. Queen. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think about this one? Incredible. Bale is so great. Now. I've watched yeah. that movie probably three hundred times. Like I can probably do the entire, literally the entire movie. It's great. And, and you know, he was a he was sort of famously a kid actor, and kind of went away Empire for a bit. the sun. Yeah, and then he shows up in this, and you're like, and the minute you see it, when it came out, it was like. People like me or my buddies like loved it, but it was reviled by some people because it's so evil and so they didn't. I think some people didn't understand the, the satire involved. But uh, Bale's like just uh, watch the scene where uh, I just watched it the other day on YouTube where they're exchanging cards and he yes, says, yep, me, yes, yes, uh, that's the exact see, scene that popped into my head. Yeah, so good. let me see Paul Allen's card and his sweat all over. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. just like, you can <laughs> see the rage building. <laughs> yeah, he's just it's cornflower it's blue. <laughs> Unbelievable, yeah. yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, that's one where you can line it up against Russell Crowe, and you could easily say that his performance in American Psycho was significantly harder, and by virtue of that, almost like better than Russell Crowe was in Gladiator. So I do think that's a great. I mean, pick. he didn't even get fucking say, nominated. Like, no, it's yeah. crazy. And also, this Eddie, like five years later, you put some muscle on him. Bale could have played that role in Gladiator easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, easily. 
I agree. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Ed Harris, Pollock, Jeffrey Rush, Quills, Tom Hanks, oh. Castaway, Javier Bardem before night falls. See, yeah. people... Tom Tom Hanks in Castaway... Is that a really good acting job? I don't know. I struggle with that one when I watch it because people are like, oh, it's incredible. It's, it's like, he was talking... Like, there's not any dialogue or anything. I think it's hard when there's a, a movie and there's just one person in it. If you can make a movie and you're the only person on screen and you're on for the majority Tired, of the movie and you yeah. still make it entertaining, that I think is a very no, I'm, it's a, I like the movie. I don't think it's some like all-time great. Yeah, People disagree with I'm that sometimes, that. but like I, I don't know. I never understood that, was that one. Zemeckis' is like last good movie. Like after like in uh, like the putting it loosely good, but like after that he just was like I need to make movies involving technology and make shit look really <laughs> creepy like like Polar Express and Welcome to Marwin or whatever. Wolf. I still say if you do the math, Helen Hunt waited like thirty minutes before she was on top of that fucking guy from Sex in the City. Like, yeah. like, what, like what's going on? She's like a ten year old kid. Hanks is like, well, you know, it seemed very strange to me. But yeah, yeah. not not oh. my favorite movie. Yeah. The by the way, you wanna? I don't know how. I don't think we've talked about this one, Kirk. I know we have. Ken Jack is. Um. Uh, a, a, like a one man by himself. Yeah. Robert Redford, All Is Lost, came out in like 2013. Right. Yeah. Really, really love that movie. Mm -hmm. Love that movie. That's that's one. If you haven't seen that, check it out. Because I know. For the What's the name of that? I'm ever. writing a few down. Yeah. All, is, All is Lost. All is Robert lost. Redford. And he's by himself a lot in Jeremiah Johnson too, which is a yeah. way older but great movie. Awesome movie. Redford. Uh, people, I think. Don't, maybe don't give him the credit of being like as influential to cinema as he is. Like Sundance doesn't exist without Robert Redford, and like a lot of in, like independent movies maybe don't exist without the opportunity to be on Sundance. So he his his influence on movies is just insane, and I've seen so many great ones too. All the President's Men. That's one of your all time favorites, right, Jeff? Right? Both of ours. Both my ours? favorite. It's my favorite movie. Yeah. Yeah, Kirk, awesome that, that's one of the first movies Kirk and I ever bonded over talking about. Was All the President's Men. Yeah, it's awesome it's movie. On, it's just. I may not watch it today because we just talked about it. <laughs> so, so, love that. Um, all right, yeah, happy to get bail there. Great performance. Kirk, you're up. Uh, I don't have picture. I have director and actress, right? So for picture, I'm going to take um, the social network uh, mm -hmm. losing to the King's Speech, which is, I mean, the King's Speech is a classic Oscar bait movie from... <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Colin, yeah. Colin Firth has a stutter and he learns the lessons of life and whatever at the end he gives a speech it's i mean the social network is you know my favorite director of the century david fincher for sure mm -hmm. uh just directing a movie that you know I don't, like i said earlier i don't think anybody watching this needs to learn about the so social network and the idea that a, a academy of film experts supposedly got together and more people said you know what i think the king's speech is a better movie than the social network is Fuck that sort of why the academy awards is insane social network is great um you can pick a bunch of snubs from that movie, I think, but I'll go because I don't have it. Uh, I'll go picture. Should've On the note picture. of, we were talking about Madonna and Lady Gaga earlier. I think Timberlake was fucking fantastic in that movie. It was a great casting, movie. perfect for him, like to use his he sort was of career. Awesome. Uh, I don't know if he's a great actor or not, but he played Justin Timberlake in that and is fantastic. Same with Zuckerberg. Uh, not Zuckerberg, Jesus. Eisenberg. Jesse, and, uh, yeah. Eisenberg. And, uh, and, uh, and I don't, you know, I don't know. You almost can't watch him again after that. You just think of, of yeah. that performance. So, and we mentioned Garfield earlier. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Everyone is is in the Sorkin script. Great movie. I don't know. Army. And by the way, with Aaron Sorkin who wrote the movie, mm -hmm. he directs movies that he wrote. Generally, they stink. Yes. And when you have a guy like David Fincher directing or Bennett Miller directing his movies, they're really good. And this is an example of that. For like it, the opening, it's a great behind the scenes of that movie, um, the Social Network that you can find. I think it's find on YouTube. But the uh, that movie alone, there's so many. I mean, the whole fucking thing. But the opening scene in the bar, which is, it's the most awesome. Isn't she up for an Oscar this year? Who? Uh, Rooney Mara. That was her, right? In the bar in scene. Movie? In Social yes, Network. Yeah, that's, that's her in the movie, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if for an Oscar. I finished that thought, Jeff. Sorry about that. But it's it's the most boxed in, simple, yet chaotic conversation. One, because Jesse Eisenberg is acting, but the directing, the back and forth of that conversation. Find a movie where you're going to be that captivated by the opening fucking credits. Him just walking from the bar back to the Harvard campus, well, and then the whole scene yeah. of him making that web. It's just that opening alone, alone with the is, great with the great score, which no other director would use. Uh, Resident to make that score too. So yeah, oh, it's, yeah, just, it's just it's just great. 
The, the, oh yeah, they're just the, fucking amazing. That movie's fucking unbelievable. Yeah, the opening fantastic. scene really is great. And, and speaking like they try to do a lot of those Silicon Valley world movies. What they made two Jobs movies. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. second one, I do Kutcher like is bad. Second one's good. Sor- First one's not great. Sorkin did write the other Steve Jobs one, which I do. I like that movie. Oh, it's Danny Boyle, right? Yeah, Fastbender, yeah. unreal performance, Best. and just and lost to Eddie Redmayne oh, for the Stephen Danish Hawking. girl or no oh, Theory of Everything. Uh, Stephen Hawking, yeah. Theory of Everything, yeah. yeah. The the f- one with Ashton Kutcher fucking sucked. Yeah, yeah, that was bad. It was bad, Josh bad. Gad. Josh Gad Josh played Gad. Wozniak. That's right. Yeah, I played Steve Wozniak. Yeah, Just You're fired. Speaks volumes that that went above and beyond and like transcended all that. So, mm-hmm. uh, Ken Jack, you're up. Um, I only have a couple of my director picks left, so I'm gonna pick one. Um, I'm gonna pick Tarantino. We've talked about Tarantino a lot. Uh, I'm gonna pick him losing out to the Hurt Locker with Inglorious Bastards. Uh, Inglorious Bastards, I think, features yep. arguably one of the best uh, supporting actors jobs ever with Christoph Waltz. And that opening scene alone, that's like I would say the best yeah. opening ever made ever to a movie. Could Fantastically be. paced, great acting, awesome action really like great pulpy stuff to it and um it lost to the hurt locker which is fine hurt locker is just a fine it's not a bad movie by any means it's not best picture especially I, hurt locker up. i didn't think was good at all i thought it's, that movie kind of sucked you, you line it up ah, side i, I side mean it was like completely whatever glorious. to me it's just like you line it up next to inglorious bastards it's no sane person says no the hurt locker is better than inglorious bastards and uh tarantino i think that's like one of his best movies it, it got so many great performances out of people and again i just can't we, we me and jeff have talked about it at length uh, ad nauseum really just about that opening scene and how great mm-hmm. it is and i just i i i goddamn love that movie i think i, I have seen movie. two christoph waltz movies django and inglorious bastards i'm mm-hmm. sure there's others i'm missing but those are all i need to see i'm like that guy's one of the absolute best actors on the planet Mm-hmm. He's fucking amazing so you guys so i remember when when those movies were coming out so they came out you know kind of close to each other uh i looked up into chris Waltz. So i'm like who the fuck is this guy this guy's amazing so i so i guess tarantino like scours uh, the earth for like indie films that are low budget that never made it to uh, like mass you know commercialized success or anything and he like handpicks those guys from that and i like vaguely recall that's how he found Christoph Waltz or something like that. He's in a new show on Amazon called The Consultant, which is which is a, a really fun, like dark comedy watch. And he's just really good in it. He's doing a lot of his stuff in Europe and just none of it was making a lot of waves in the US. Until, okay. Until he came here with Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. I, I love that one. Yeah. I love that movie. White Sox, Dave, you were up. I'm saving my best actor for last. Um, I am going to go with picture. I'm going to go and I would assume that it came out in a loaded year, but I'm going to go saving private Ryan. Um, I it's, it's my favorite war movie. I would say um, I don't count Inglorious bastards as a war movie. Cause I do like Inglorious bastards more, I would say, but um, saving private Ryan, like the opening scene when they're storm Normandy, it's the guy's picking up his own arm and walking off. It's like every, every single thing about it is, is, you know, you feel like you're in Normandy. You're like, holy fuck, these guys did this. It's insane. Mm-hmm. People like, like the, the, the cinema, the the camera work when it slows down. It like hey, when when he's like he's hiding behind one of those uh, barricade things, the like steel beam things, and there's blood splatting on his face. I don't know how that movie didn't win Best Picture. One of the weirder nominated years. Shakespeare like, in you, Love won. You had two was... similar movies like Shakespeare in Love and Elizabeth in terms of like eras, time period. Then you had Thin Red Line and Save Robert Ryan, two war movies. Then you had Life is Beautiful. Right. Mm. That was a famous uh, sort of Harvey Weinstein bought that Oscar for. Yeah. 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 Oh, it yeah. Was a Weinstein special. That was a big controversy. I like Saving Private Ryan probably not as much as other. Well, I, it's a Spielberg thing with me. Who I think is obviously a great director. Yeah. I don't like the beginning and end. I don't need the old man like crying at the graves at the beginning and the end. Just start the movie. I like, mean, it's like 30 um, seconds a piece. It it's like a 180 like minute movie, it's and that so, takes up like 30 the whole end of the seconds. Movie, the end of the movie, he turns to his wife. He's like, "Am I?" He's like breaking down. Am I a good man? Of, you think there's any chance he's gonna be like, "Actually, you're kind of a fucking asshole." <laughs> yeah, you fucking fight cock. 1978. Like, I'm still not over. <laughs> like, it's just so it's so Spielberg. You can't fucking help himself. Just tell the story. Like, I you know, I I like when they're. I like when they're there and they're fighting. It's 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 a great movie. By the way, you're right. Like of the movies nominated that year, like I've never seen the other ones now that they were mentioned. 
Yeah, the Thin Red Line I don't think is. No, oh, I haven't seen Thin Red Line. It's that's that's you don't, uh, you don't need to turn around. Terry Malick tonight. Don't worry. You don't need to see any Terry Malick. Shakespeare in Love, like I. Sticks. I've never seen it. I have no idea what it's about it other is, than okay. Shakespeare being in love. And I can tell you it's not as good as Saving Private Ryan right now. Kirk, we've talked about it on your show because this is we discussed this at, at our very famous lunch in Boston with Rico Bosco. But yeah. we talked about how <laughs> we talked you about the Fablemans earlier. And I, I really enjoyed the Fable Fablemans. Great. Right? Right. It's like the schmaltziest movie he made. And yet he somehow didn't have like the over the top schmaltzy like jesus christ yeah, ending. it's a great and, ending for once like he yeah, made awesome ending. ending yeah no, which is a spielberg problem if he has any problem it's that usually it's but no it's a great and it's like for people my age when that movie came out we weren't ready for tom hanks and if, if you think of who he was at that point right 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 so in one, seattle that kind of shit yeah. be like a grizzled like hard ass war guy mm -hmm. who's kind of harrison ford turned the role down which he would have been great <sighs> in but didn't know that uh, but the minute you see Hanks, the first time you see him, like, oh, this is great casting. This fits. So it, it does work. The yeah. whole cast, I think, was awesome, too. Like, even Sizemore, they had to keep off drugs uh, he, for that movie. He he's about to perfectly. pass away, I guess. Yeah, he, oh, geez, he is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the rest of that cast, amazing, too. So many great moments, too, from, like, like Matt Damon improv that entire speech he did about the brothers in the barn. Like, so many insane, just put, like, behind-the-scenes sort of things. Also, great casting in that movie. The guy, whoever the name of the guy who played Upham is, I think his name is, like, Jeremy something. Jeremy Davies? Jeremy Davies, yeah. Dude, what a hateable. What a hateable character. He Great was on my casting. punchable face list. Oh, my God. When yeah. he's walking up those stairs with the magazines around yeah. his shoulders. <laughs> and I, I have a college buddy, one of my best friends to this day, that looks exactly. What's that guy's name from, like, Entourage and shit? At uh, Jeremy Piven? No, 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 no. The, he was who was also in Save Private Ryan. The guy a that guy, gets stabbed of, that from the German they let go. Adam Goldberg? Adam Goldberg? It, I, he, he's a Jewish guy, so Goldberg probably makes sense. But um, <laughs> the... When when he's getting stabbed, like every time I watch this movie, in this moment, I'm like, "Fucking run up the stairs, yeah, go and save the German, him." The German guy just like, looks whispering at the guy. to him too as the bayonet's like going down. It's yeah, just, oh, it's rough. Yeah. So many great scenes in that though. That's a great pick. No, 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 no. Yeah. All right, White oh. Sox, Dave. You need another pick before you make your pick. Though, let's talk about the sweatshirt you're wearing. That's Roback. My favorite hoodie on earth. There it is, Dave. Rollback Activewear. Their performance hoodies, joggers, and polos are simply the best. Best fit, best feel, just all around the best. You don't even know this ad was going today. I had no idea. Um, computer's down for the count right now for the next few days. Um, so I'm just freeballing it. And I will say, if you walk into the Barstool Sports headquarters in New York City, what percentage of people do you think are a wearing Roback? A lot. It really Half. is strong stuff, guys. It's my favorite hoodie on earth. Yeah. I, I got Roback joggers. I love Roback. It's, it's strong stuff. Quality, quality stuff. Yeah, and they recently restocked their performance joggers. They're incredible. They're uh, functional, versatile, and comfortable. These joggers check off every box. Perfect for a day on the move or recovery Sunday. You'll never want to take these things off. Roback's performance hoodie, which Dave is wearing, is also the most comfortable hoodies out there. With the spring quickly approaching, uh, Roback hoodies are your answer. It's a great spring hoodie. Use code DOG on Roback.com for 20% off all your new uh, customers. For all new customers through the end of the week, that's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. That's 20% off all hoodies, joggers, and polos with code DOG. That's a great deal. Yeah. Roback. I wear those joggers so much that, and then this is honest to God true, it's not even a story. I wear those joggers so much that here and there I'll I'll catch a whiff of whiff of them because you know, they just don't <laughs> and, leave my body. And remember, through the end of the week, that's key. I I always have people hitting me up, be like, "Hey, well, the robo the rollback program pro, uh, promo code is not working." It's like, well, yeah, you gotta you gotta get on this action fast, fast folks. So uh, make sure you do it right now. So just in time for spring. Make sure you check them out at rollback.com. All right, let's get back into it. Sorry, uh, Dave, what do, you, what do you got? Okay, this is a part of my draft where I assume that you guys were just, at this point, waxing the floor with me. Um, song was the hardest one for me. Uh, like, the songs that I knew all won. So this one didn't win. I'm going with Beauty and the Beast. Great movie. Love all Disney cartoon movies. I can't believe that didn't win. I don't know. That's all I got on it. Which one? Sorry. Beauty and the Beast. The song. I think Beauty that did win. Beauty and the Beast. I'm pretty sure it did not. It, it didn't. It was nominated three times. It, what, Be Our Guest and Bell didn't win. Yeah, it did uh, win. Wait, 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 hold on. It won, what did Be it Our win? Guest. Yeah, you could take Be Our Guest All or right, Bell. I'll take Be Our Guest. <laughs> well, I thought... <laughs> yeah. 
Because at that point, I'm like, what fucking original songs do I even know? And then it just clicked Disney songs. And that was one that I thought saw did not win. Like the, the I, like the songs I, with uh, in Lion King and shit, they, they won. There's yeah. multiple entries, too. For scrolling, years. scrolling the best song list is truly Crazy. a good laugh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the year before Dick Tracy, sooner or later, Steven Sutton. <laughs> Wait, so I got to go with uh, Beer Guest then? Yeah, unless if you want to do something else, because you, well, yeah, Bell, I'll go, I'll just to Bell keep things moving, because I would have to song. look it up. Yeah, be our guest then. I'll go be our guest. Nah, it, is, be our guest. it is very good. Yeah. Be our guest. Be our guest. And then they spoofed it on The Simpsons. <laughs> All right, Ken Jack, back to you. Um, I have a couple for best actor that I'm interested in. Um, it's it's difficult because there's one that I really want that I think was easily the best actor that year, but like the guy who did win was also really damn good. So, fuck, I might not pick it anyway. Jack Nicholson in The Shining not beating hmm. Robert De Niro for Raging Bull, where it's like, Raging Bull, he's awesome in Raging Bull. That's probably De Niro's best performance. And like, at the same time, that. though, if you're talking Jack Nicholson in The Shining, that's maybe the best performance, uh, like top five performance ever by anybody. He's just so goddamn menacing and perfect in that movie. And just like one of the most iconic horror lines ever. Here's Johnny. Like all these great moments coming from Jack Nicholson in that. And just he's able, I think, in that movie um, and many others as well, to convey so much through a, a look, just a face that like where he doesn't need to say a goddamn word. He just makes a look and you feel everything he is trying to tell you. And man, I just I fucking love him. I love that movie, too, obviously. But like that, he is he is the star of it for me. And uh, I just want to pick him. And again, no disrespect to Raging Bull. It's just like I think you make the case. I mean, I think the argument you can even make for that, if you want to say that De Niro, he wasn't even nominated for The Shining. Yeah, that's that's a, it's say, even worse of a snub. Yeah, he wasn't even nominated, which is you know, is I mean, Nicholson would probably been nominated like five times at that point. So I think mm-hmm. I think it's one of those movies when it came out back then. No, he would never get nominated for a movie like that back yeah. then. Yeah, just, just not. They would nominate two British guys like De Niro, who's great. Like he gained and lost a lot of weight, so, and he's also great in the movie. But they would nominate people like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, I don't even know who Jack Nicholson is today. I'm trying to think of whoever that is. Maybe Bale. Say gives a performance like that for a director like that. Definitely nominated. Definitely. Yeah. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're right with the British guys. It'd be like Alec Guinness in like The Queen's Tapestry or something right. like that, <laughs> yeah. or whatever, and like and like two other guys. Damn. But yeah, I just man. Great performance. A great, role. great performance. Great pick. I like it. Uh, Kirk, you're back up. If I have actor and song, I think. Let me qu- uh, quickly, because we, we aren't doing supporting, I'm just going to give you a couple. One supporting that frustrated me. If I could go back in history and give an Academy Award to somebody who didn't win it, if I could change it, I would have given it to Sylvester Stallone for Creed. Just just on the record. It's yes. Nice. Awesome. Oh, that movie. Oh, what a snub that was. He's my, he is my, after Gene Hackman, he's my favorite actor. Rocky's my favorite. Like, and he's so great in Creed. And Mark Rylance is a fine actor. Bridge of Spies, again, like nobody is gives a shit about. It doesn't I matter. I left no impact. You know, Sylvester Stallone, who, is, who did shit for like 20 years, plays a character in this movie for this great director. And there's a minute, the first time you see him in the restaurant with Michael B. Jordan, I remember being in the theater and I swear to God, I cried. I was like, this is actually fucking happening. I want him to win the Oscar so bad, but I can't. I can't pick him. I understand supporting, so I will say for uh, best actor, uh, we mentioned him earlier, but I'm going to say the fact that Ray Liotta wasn't even nominated for Goodfellas. Um, a lot of Goodfellas on here. I mean, he's a, he's the lead. I mean, he is the lead, obviously, in Goodfellas. Carries the entire movie. Is incredible in it. Uh, to not be nominated, and back then, like he would nominate Robert De Niro for Awakenings, which is just a dreadful, <laughs> stupid fucking movie for, for idiots. But Leota is so great and it's so menacing, but yet then at times like it's just, it's just like, you know, he's the heart and soul of, you know, best movie of the last, I don't know, 35, 40 years. For him not to be nominated is. I'm going to use your argument. Not that I disagree with anything you said. Yeah. I'm playing devil's advocate here because I'm trying to win a snake draft. You said you hate movies where that. there's narration. I agree. And that's an example. Of one of the few times where it actually works for me. And that's exception, not his fault. Exception to the rule. The, yeah. But you're right. You're right. Like generally, I don't. And that one, it kind of works. It's almost like he's, I his, almost feel like it's he's another, great. It's another character. It's almost like another character in the movie. Him there. Right? Yeah. Think of when they go around the bar, and he introduces everybody doing the. Narrative. My grandpa's in that scene. Is he, that true? He plays, he plays Nicky Eyes. He was a he was a oh, crooked really? cop in the '50s, and he advised Scorsese on that in Casino, and he had small roles in both. My old landlord was uh, uh, Nick Spilatro, who was Nicky Santoro 
they changed his name um, in Casino. It was his nephew. Oh, huh. look at yeah. that. We all have connections to this, Little to this guy. Yes. No, huh. he really was great. Going from like apprehensive guy who was new to the club, then going to full blown drug guy. Like he, there was many shades he had in well, that. If you watch Boss, the scene, paranoia, like, all that. Yeah, like, you watch the, the scene, repeats the shit out of the guy who's being an asshole at Karen with the gun, right? But then you watch a scene. Oh, you could see the anger in his face. Like, he right. actually just beat the shit out of that guy. I don't think that, like, yeah, it's awesome. And then you watch, but then you watch a scene, conversely, where he's having dinner with, uh, with, with Scorsese's mom, who plays Tommy's yep, mom. Yep. And he's, he's so just much a little shy guy. quiet and shy. Yeah. And that's the same actor doing the yeah. same thing. And then he's not on drugs and he's a total, like, he does it, does it all. And it's then crazy. the scene where he is on drugs in the hospital office with his, it was his brother, right? Um, and yeah. he's like sweating bullets, and he just looks yeah. fucking miserable. And he's like, "Come on, come on, just take take some. You'll be you'll feel better." It's great, right? Right. Yeah. That yeah. who won that year? Jeremy Irons. Yeah, played uh, uh, Bombulo in Reverse yeah. of Fortune. Which I mean, again, it's like a British guy playing. Uh, you know, it's fine, but yeah, it feels like a TV movie if you watch it now. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, it's back to me. I need a song or a director. I think Jeff is a director, so I'm gonna go song here. I'm between two. I'm between two, but I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with Footloose, man. Yeah, hell yeah. I, I think at Ooh, this okay. point, people who hear that song, and I might be crazy for this. Tell me if I'm you're crazy. You're not, because I think I know what you're gonna say, and I would have been one of those people. I think people would hear the song and not even know there was it was from a movie. I didn't know that. Oh, is that is that true? Yes, is that true? I'm, like Jesus. it's like crazy. yeah. My, where I went to You're college, right. Wednesday had 80, 80s nights, and this was a staple of 80s night. You know, everyone loved it, and Footloose, like, set everybody ablaze. So I think it's to that point where people might not, not I just not, assumed it was a song that came out in the 80s. Not most, probably minimal, but I'm just saying that. You're there not is, wrong, There's Ed. probably a small contingent of people that would not even know it was a movie. It's a fucking unbelievable song. It was yeah, it's a good little right? fucking basement party song. It was nominated. It lost to Stevie, Stevie Wonder, Wonder one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. From, uh, so, Woman in Red. Yeah. But you. But but mm. yeah. By far. Yeah. Yeah. The more lasting song ooh, for sure. I might have to Absolutely. go to the hangup this weekend, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Great song. That's a good. That, I had that that year. That actually that category kind of circled. But yeah, that's a that's a good pick. Yeah, and Stevie Wonder, I just called to say I love you. It's terrible. It's bad Stevie. There's good Stevie and bad. That's bad Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Exactly. The Footloose, by the way, just so you, like you know, I'm old enough. That soundtrack, back when there was soundtrack, that soundtrack was a monster. It had uh, a couple of number one songs. Like it was, it, it probably sold. I bet you 20 million copies. So, and the movie was a huge hit. But you're right. I, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that's weird. Jeez, that's crazy. Fuck them. Damn, this track listing is crazy. It's yeah. amazing. I mean, it's about to be 40 years old next year. I know. You don't have to say that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. you don't have to say that. I apologize. But, when that. Next year, you said, so it came out 84? Yeah. 84, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I'm old. Yeah. Um, you're, old. you're fucking old. I'll be 50 next year. <laughs> I remember thinking when I turned 25, fuck, I'm closer to 30 than I am to 20. This year, I'll be closer to 40 than I am to 30. Makes me sick. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, only going to keep I, keep going that way. Yep. Jeff, you're back up. Thinking about age. Uh, actress for me. <clears throat> I'm between two. One is a, one's a Tarantino uh, person because it's one of my favorite roles performances from an absolutely underrated Tarantino. Does anyone have Best Actress still left? Jeff, no, I, this is I my don't. backup pick to Uma Thurman. This does person. anyone have Actress left? No, no, you're the last one. Know. Okay, so it's obviously it's Pam Greer, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Jackie Brown. Jackie but Brown. I'm gonna go. I'm going old. I'm going fucking old because I can't believe this wasn't nominated. She actually technically won an Oscar for it, but it's some like. Pokey, like like Honorary. juvenile award. 19, they 19, it. 1939? It's Judy Garland. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Wizard of Oz. I mean, one of the most like if you were to pick like what three performances in the history of movies to represent movies, you'd probably pick Judy Garland, Wizard of Oz. Now, granted, it came out in a year with by inflation, the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> and gone with the wind in terms of box office performance. Lost to Vivian Lee, but like Judy Garland again. This is this is to me, and this is maybe like a bias of of growing up movies I watched as a kid. But like to me, growing up, when I thought movies, I thought Willy Wonka, Gene Wilder, and Star Wars to an extent. I didn't take any Star Wars shit. And uh, Julie Garland, Wizard of Oz, um, playing Dorothy. I, so that that is my pick. Though 
Pam Grier, Jackie Brown, fucking awesome, <laughs> fucking awesome movie. I was so late into the game on Jackie Brown, and and yeah, and it's just it's, a, it's just a fantastic movie. Great movie. But like, but like the Wizard of Oz, like as you get older, and I used to it was on once a year as a kid. Like the older you get, it's a bonkers, batshit, crazy movie. Oh, like, I, crazy, that movie still fucking gives me the willies. Such a crazy performance she gives. Like it's actually mm-hmm. like, kind of a you know, and the guy. So those two movies came out that year: Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind. You know. That was they were directed by the same guy that year, 1939. Mr. Fleming <laughs> directed amazing. those two movies, and he's not even like a known director. But yeah, I, that's a good. I, I actually I thought of that too. That's a. How old was she at the time? Seventeen. She would have been oh, probably older, right? They were always older. Uh, how old? Oh, fuck, I can't. I had it up earlier. Uh she's only sixteen at the time. Damn, okay. that's crazy. That is crazy. That movie but, was, yeah, was and, and, and just the sickening thing is that Renee Zeller won for no, <laughs> won playing, for playing Judy Garland, which yeah. is so because she is she she wrote, in general is like a known Oscar snub, like her accolades are just are bare. And then she's somebody won playing her terrible movie, yeah. in a bad later, movie, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, such a uh, and then I guess song, right? Yep. I'm gonna go with I don't want to miss a thing <laughs> um, from Armageddon. Oh. I'm gonna go. Fuck, I'm gonna man. go. Smith. It it won Great a song. year with it that won a year with too. when you believe from the Prince of Egypt by DreamWorks. Oh. Um, I don't know. I just it's one of those movies. It, it like from tr- honestly, I'm I'm completely going against my own opinion about what should be nominated for best song. I think a movie. I think a song should be like insanely integrated. And I have a few on here. I know people have song left, so I won't say what. There's a couple on here I want to bring up, but I I do. I don't know. Like what when I when I hear that song, I think of Armageddon. So there's some I funny. There's some even, funny. Re- I would have picked that yeah. had I came across it when I was googling shit this morning. The animal cracker. <laughs> the one, oh, the animal. Oh, Ed. The animal cracker scene. The don't get me started me on the animal I cracker scene. The when I scrolled my list that made me laugh out loud, and I actually now that I know whatever, it's that Randy Newman was nominated for a Fool in Love for Meet the Parents. That one got me. That was I got a good laugh out of that one. Everyone remembers that song. And then he won the next year again for Monsters, Inc. After, I believe he won for, uh, he actually did not. See, I, see, I, I fucked up. I remember that year. I fucked up. Yeah. I should have picked. Okay. <laughs> Too late. Actually, should have won that. I've one never seen Monsters, Inc. Whatever. I, I, I put that on I my thought list. he won for it. Okay. You never saw Monsters, Inc.? No, it's just one of those movies. I'm it's like the movie. last what? guy on earth to not see Monsters, one. Inc. Oh, all those movies are great. I'm sure it's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, I regret good. my pick. I blew it. I kind of wish I could take it back now, but okay. I don't want to miss the things good though, Jeff. It, you needed That's a little. A pick, you needed to modernize your board a little bit, even though. Yeah, I, I, I blew. I blew it though. I blew it. No, I, I blew, think I it. It, honestly, it was such a radio success and like just general music success. I didn't even think. <laughs> I knew like now that it's brought up, I'm like, oh, of course it was from mm-hmm. the movie, but um, I didn't even realize it was. I don't know. I separated two. My my favorite is is. Is Kirk? You've seen out Kendrick. We talked about this. Uh, is the the weekend song nominated for Avatar this year? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> remembers this. Like everybody knows that one. Jesus. Well, there's a movie. There's a song nominated this year from a movie I've never even heard of. It's another Diane Warren one. She's been nominated, set, which I think you know she's been nominated like seven thousand times. She's never won. Mm-hmm. She was nominated for one last year, the year before, where Chrissy Metz from. Uh, this is us saying it. I was like, "What? Oh what yeah, fucking song. What is this? Who are these people? Who saw this movie? I didn't even understand it." <laughs> yeah, like last year it was Four Good year. Days. This year it's Tell It Like a Woman. Yeah, what's that Everyone from? Knows what movie is that from? Applaud. It's it's from a movie called Tell It Like a Woman. What is that? Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> no, it's an American and <laughs> Italian anthology film. <laughs> <laughs> and she and she got one the year before again for the life the life ahead. Yeah, she never won. She's been nominated seven thousand times. No, the, I. I'm actually pretty confident. Hold on, let me double check. She also got nominated for Armageddon. I don't want to miss it. Oh, thing. she wrote that. Yeah, that's her song. She wrote <laughs> yeah. that song. Yeah, that's her song. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Steve Perry, oh, yeah. or not Steve Perry, Steve Tyler. This, right? this year, barring a shocker, by the way, Eddie and Dave, the song that's going to win this year is going to be from a movie called RRR, an Indian movie. Um, Great song. Tyler, not to, not to, which is. That's a lot. It, we'll see if they fucking blow it. But if they don't have an electric performance of that song on, they said stage, they are. They said they are, right? Okay. They said they're, they they are okay. that they are doing the two main stars of that movie. They're they're performing it at the okay. Oscars because it's gonna be it's, it's like win. that'll be the showstopper. And yeah, 
That's gonna be yeah. awesome. Great song. Mm-hmm. That's a movie I think you you guys, even if you're not like totally into foreign movies, it's like the most turn off your brain, dumb, mindless action and dance movie ever. Oh, which really? yeah, big dude rocks movie. movie. Big dudes rock movie. I love yeah. Parasite. Yeah, not exactly the same vibe. No, as yeah, <laughs> this just popped into my and Parasite head. are like two totally different. It's like it's like a different universe. <laughs> yeah. The next. All right. uh, what did you say? Well, I, uh, this is fresh in my mind because you just said it, like turn off your brain movie. We should draft with this exact same crew next time, Chiefs on vacation or whatever. Uh, trash movies that you know are objectively horrible that you still love. Because I got one. Pleasure, basically, yeah. Never back down. I fucking love that movie, and it is so bad. That seems like one that yeah I think Marty likes that movie a lot if I remember right oh wait no he likes um he used to stomp the yard in the backyard with his friends mm, which is the, just weird. the weirdest thing <laughs> um, all right it's Not back to me I need a director I'm gonna go with a legend of the genre and um, I'm gonna take John Carpenter for Halloween yeah um, was not even nominated. He made a great... and he showed off his his horror movie love. I had yeah. to. You knew it was coming. I had to. He set up a small little Midwest town, and he did it in California. If like you know the tips and tricks of the movie, you could see like palm trees in the background, or but it was like so low budget and everything. And I mean, all the movies that have been rebooted and franchised and sequeled. I mean, it, it starts with Halloween, so. There's a the really great John Carpenter quote where they're like, well, how do you feel about all these remakes they make of your movie? And he's like, you know, a great thing happens every time they do those is I get a big fat check in the mail. And that's all I really care about. <laughs> and uh, he's I mean, he made the music for those movies. He like mm. did shot them. He did all of that stuff. And Halloween specifically, like he did all these techniques that like weren't really like popular to do or anything like that. Like he used Steadicam to do that scene where he goes into the house and like with the POV of Michael Myers, which no one had ever done something like that before. And it, man, just so many great techniques in that. And I just love, fucking love John Carpenter, man. I drafted the thing in um, uh, the first, uh, like first yep. overall in the horror draft. Yep. Yeah. Maybe like 10, eight, 10 years ago, it was a Scorsese wrote a, a column and a film comment. A, it's a, mag, a film magazine. And he talked about how much he loves Carpenter and he mentioned Halloween and they live. And, uh, uh, he's he's like he's like uh, he doesn't get credit because that's not the way critics do it. But this guy is a master director, and he is like the old like that's guys in the, one of the great careers of all time. Mm-hmm. Yep, so Legend. many great movies. So I'm happy to get that in the fifth. It's a good pick. That's Thank a very you. good pick. Uh, Kirk, you're up again. All right, so I have song left, and that's it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me do a, a quick because I'm trying to win this. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, it's not my pick, but uh, somebody else can take. It, I don't care. But uh, a singer songwriter from New Jersey, Bruce Springsteen, in uh, uh, Secret Garden wrote, wrote, a, wrote a song. No, well, that's, <laughs> that's, but that's wrote a, from uh, the song called called "The Wrestler" for the film. Yeah, mm-hmm. he won the Golden Globe for that movie. It's a great song. Like, and he was not nominated for the Academy Awards that year specifically because it started when the credits began, and the Academy Award then said we can't nominate him because it wasn't during the movie he would have won the oscar he won the golden globe he already won an oscar but i don't think it's gonna get he wrote that that song for jerry Maguire, didn't he is that secret garden no secret garden was released it it, it was uh, it was in jerry Maguire, but he had written it okay all right never mind i'm I'm taking a couple years but it's in the movie you're right it's in uh it was a hit because of that movie Mm. um okay but i i think i'm going to take uh it's on my list a song that jeff just referenced earlier uh, Randy Newman from Toy Story, which did not win. This is well, as soon friend. as no. soon as someone yeah. said, I, they might have even said Randy Newman. I was like, "Fuck!" Well, that's when Jeff said it too. I was like, "Oh, well, I'm gonna cry." It's not yeah. one of my favorite songs, but I know that it's. I mean, the fact yeah. that it win is just like. I mean, I don't know what's. More it lost to Colors of the Wind, I think. Yeah, correct from Pocahontas, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm fuck. Gonna, I was I'm between this and Footloose, and uh, well, I was thinking of. Uh, um, when Doves Cry from Purple Rain from that same year, uh, mm. but I went with uh, I, yeah I went with that one also because then Jeff references I was like I might as well pick it. So. That's an all yeah I, 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 I'm, I'm glad somebody took it because I the sec again in my head I would never but Randy Newman's lost so many fucking times so I should have thought about that but yeah that, I mean it is in terms of Pixar songs I think Remember Me is my favorite from Coco which did win. Um, that's such a fucking tearjerker. This is the most, probably the most famous one, though. I would say is yes. Yeah, it's, it's it, it lasts through all the movies. It's it it extends beyond the movie. Yeah, that's a great pick. Has there ever been a series, and I'm asking this sincerely to you guys, that has just nailed every single movie of the series? 
just like a um, 10 out John of 10. John Wick so far is the only one where I'm like, they are the most consistent. We were just talking about that recently. Like as far as in Lord, Lord of the, the Rings, Rings, the first Lord of the Rings trilogy, but then they have the Hobbit underneath the sort of same umbrella. But like, I would say like as far as like not having a miss at all. Yeah, like I mean, I was, yeah four, four was considered worse than every other one. And I still really liked four. Still really I thought two was worse it. than the other three. And but it was that, it's that still miss, like though, an you know awesome I mean? fucking movie. Yeah. That's yeah, the thing, though. It's like the, the expectations are relative where it's like it's a shoot 'em up movie. It's like you, you're not really expected to do something crazy or anything like that. But like all through all three of them were like revolutionarily level action movie. Good. I we, just watched Matrix the other night. The other the two following. Yeah, that one fell off a cliff. fucking trash. <laughs> yeah, Matrix <laughs> fucking trash. We talked about this the other day. One of the more underrated recent ones is the new Planet of the Apes series. Yeah. Hmm. Those Very awesome. underappreciated. Yeah, it's yeah. There's yeah, that, yeah. Those are pretty good. I mean, I, this doesn't count, but I would say the Before Sunrise trilogy or yeah, that's, yes, that's not, that's not like a. Yes. I mean, it's not a, I, I wouldn't consider that a franchise exactly. So <laughs> no, no, but, not yet. No, I'm not buying the action figures for that the, one. But those, but no, yeah, the, the Before yeah. trilogy is fucking awesome. It's a great song. Yeah. That was a great movie. You've got a friend of me is great. It's such a feel good song. Yeah, I kind of regret not taking it, but. Me too. I'll stick with Footloose. I, I, just I should have noted, by the way, not to derail us too much as we're ending here. I should have taken I, I have a big movie bag of popcorn. <laughs> and I just feel like that needed to be <laughs> thrown in there at some point. Yeah. It's the, just needed, needed to it's fix the, the theme. Love that. Yeah. Uh, Ken Jack, your final pick. Uh, Dave, you already picked your best picture, right? So, yep. You did. All right. I got like, it. I'm struggling with a few. I don't want to pick him Glorious Bastards over Hurt Locker again because I already did that with Tarantino over Bigelow. Um there's a couple other ones though on here, like Social Network over King's Speech. I think you already picked, right? I did. Um, mm-hmm. City of God, not not even being nominated and losing. That's that game. insane. City of God's one of the best movies ever made. Let alone it's ob- it's easily the best foreign movie ever made. Um, and it wasn't even nominated. Uh, in Lost. Have you seen it. City of God? No. Oh, you got to watch it this weekend. It's a one masterpiece. Best ever. Um, Fellowship of the Ring over Beautiful Mind. Like Beautiful Mind should not. Have one best picture. I'm sorry. It's a fine know, movie. I know they should not have won that. Um, but I'm going to go with Fargo losing to the English Patient, one of the most boring fucking movies ever made. That's a good pick. Losing out to Fargo, which is like one of the Coen brothers' best. And just like that is one you can watch no matter what mood you're in, you can watch Fargo. It is just that goddamn good. Excellent performances across the board. Fucking Francis McDormand. Like that's um, not like it's obviously not a first movie or anything like that, but that was like the movie that put her on the map. And she went on to win two more Oscars. Um, she didn't win Steve an Oscar Shemmy. for Fargo. No, wait. Oh, you're right. So that's three. She has right. She that's has three. Yeah. Yeah. Duh. That's right. Um, and then um, Steve Buscemi and uh, that big old Swedish dude that's always in like he always plays like a like a Russian thug yeah, or Peter something. Peter Stolmeyer or whatever his name is. Yeah. yeah something like that. Yeah, uh, great William H Macy. Just a great. Yes. Movie. I love Should've his face won. in that. So I know Cuba, uh, people like the Cuba, 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 Cuba? Yeah. Cuba? And Jerry Maguire, yeah, Cuba. but Cuba. Uh, people say Cuba good. Yeah, I think they do, right? Yeah, it, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, I know he won for Jerry Maguire, but William H Macy should have won that year. But yeah, uh, that's a good. That's a good pick. He was like such a great weasel in that movie. If that made, like, oh, just yeah. like the reactions and the way he had like that sort of like fearful undertone to everything he would say, and like that something with that that, that upper Midwest accent. It's just it adds to that too. And man, I just love those movies so much. We just interviewed Bruce Campbell, and um, we we learned a little fact about Evil Dead. Uh, did not know that Joel Cohen edited parts of that movie um, back in 1981. I think it was made or something like that, um, which is crazy. Um, had their start there. And then Bruce Campbell did other Cohen Brothers movies. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to go with Fargo losing to English Patient. English Patient was one of the most boring movies I think I've ever seen in my life. So Cohen, right? The Cohen. Uh, it would be Fargo Joel. losing Best Picture to the English Patient. Um, so Best Picture, Fargo. Fargo, yeah. Didn't you take Inglorious Bastards? No, I was saying Inglorious Bastards um, was one I was considering taking over uh, Hurt Locker, but I already picked Ka- um, uh, Quentin Tarantino over Catherine Bigelow in director. Ah, so you took Tarantino for yeah, Inglo- yeah, yeah. All right, sorry, I fucked yeah. that up. Got you. Good pick. Yeah, just reversed that. Fargo's great. Great movie. Great series, too. Um, well, inconsistent, but like the, fir- the first season and the third season were really, really good. All right, Dave. Mr. Relevant, who you got? Like I said, I just kind of assumed I'd be tapping out at this point, and this is a joke pick, so I don't want people to take it serious, but I don't think there's one person on planet Earth, and I don't know the don't actor's know. name, and I don't want to know the actor's name. Thurman Merman should have won a best picture, or best <laughs> actor. Not one person on the planet could have done what Thurman Merman did in Bad Santa. 
<laughs> Go ahead Jeff's and roast like the Even him, because he came back and tried to do it again, he couldn't do it. No, that's right. Number one I never Santa saw the guy. second one because I didn't want it to taint the first one from me. Ba- Bad Santa is one of the best written movies in terms of co- I, I'm, I, mean, I mean, look, if you know me, you know I, I cape for that movie as hard as anybody. I, I mean, it's so fucking funny. Obviously, Billy Bob, he's a fantastic actor, but you see the name Bad Santa, you're like, oh, this movie's going to fucking suck. You watch it, and you're killing over in laughter. <laughs> and a lot of the reasons it, because of Thurman Merman. Not just, but, I, mean, but, I mean, multiple deceased comedic actors too john yeah. ritter yeah, yeah, yeah. And bernie mac movie. bernie mac yeah bernie mac um hit bernie mac sucking down an entire cigarette in one puff it's just, just the whole it's yeah i, I love that that's, that's so good he kind of looked like i remember for a while people were trying to speculate that that bill center look was uh played Thurman oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric yeah i remember Woods that. or something oh something yeah yeah Woods. Well, kevin wood or something was something that, wood i remember yeah. but yeah <laughs> that guy did eric look wood. a lot like him too i think it was eric wood um, all right, so you're taking Brett Kelly from No, Bad I don't Santa. want to know his name. Why'd you fucking do that? He's Thurman Merman. He's typecast as Thurman Merman forever. Thurman. Thank God nobody picked the fucking Denzel movie for you to go rant about. Yeah, I can't believe you just did that. True. Well, let me tell you this, Dave. Just put Thurman Merman there. Everybody knows who Thurman Merman is. He turns 30 this year. That makes me fucking sick to my stomach. <laughs> Damn. That really, really hurts me. And I'll say this, too. I didn't see Sandlot 2, but there was no better better follow-up casting than to him to play uh, the catcher from Hamilton mm-hmm. Porter than Thurman Merman. I didn't know he that, was in it. Yeah, I, that's was, another movie I yeah. refuse to ever see because I don't want it to taint the first one. Yeah. That, how was the second one, though, for Bad Santa? Oh, horrible. It was horrible. Okay. Horrible. An absolute... A, a gross misunderstanding of what the, movie, the first movie was. Just an <laughs> abomination to the Lord? Real bad. Real bad. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do a couple honorable mentions here. Um, Dave, you had a good board, and uh, you were doing well. So uh, I'm interested to see who gets voted off. But does it, Kirk, you got anything else you want to give some some honorable mentions here? Yeah, just a couple. Um, uh, okay, I think I said I think I mentioned uh, supporting actor truth into Joel Gray and Cabaret. One supporting actor that year beat. Khan, Duvall, and Pacino for The Godfather. <laughs> yeah. Pacino, lost, Pacino lost lead actor Godfather 2 to Art Carney from uh, Honeymoon. <laughs> Steven Spielberg was not dire- nominated for director of Jaws and oh. lost E.T. to the director of uh, of uh, of Gandhi. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a... Uh, uh, do I have any other... You know a song? Uh, one of the songs I thought about that was not nominated was That Thing You Do. Yeah, uh, great movie. Good, which good I think you could have nominated. That's that song was not nominated. I thought that that you know definitely could have been uh, been nominated. So yeah, I have those. Good song, Jeff. Anything else you want to shout out? Yeah, I mean, we talked all the president's men. I mean, raging bull by pictures. I, it was tough to not pick Star Wars. Star Wars is yeah. top five most influential thing in the history of entertainment. Um, How about Empire not being nominated at all? It would never have happened back then. Yeah, yeah. Empire, which, I mean, Empire to me stands alone as just an incredible fucking movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just so Space goddamn opera. good. And, uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's my number one movie of all time, period. Uh, best. Uh, and then Actor, um, I, I still love Sandler Uncut Gems, but the one for me, the reason I talked about was Jake Joan Hall and Nightcrawler, one of the all time yeah. stars. Uh. He is. You love unreal really good in Nightcrawler, and to not get a nomination is fucking crazy. By the way, the Steve Jobs performance lost to Leo in The Revenant. Um, Joan Hall didn't get nominated the year that Fear of Everything won. Uh, Eddie Redmayne, uh, director. I had a tough time not picking Fincher, Social Network, um, but I, I couldn't leave Marty on the board. Nolan, Inception, and then Song. I had Everything Is Awesome, Lego Movie. <laughs> um, that didn't win. Uh, how f- that lost to glory, Selma made sense. How far I'll go, Moana. That was the year La La Land came she out. She sang it too, didn't she? And the um, the, 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 she did. She came on, and then uh, Lin Manuel Miranda did like a fucking Moana rap before he came on stage, and uh, really yeah. brought the house yeah. down. Um, Accidentally in Love from Shrek Two, <laughs> The Counting Crows. I wanted to pick them. Right. I did or, not uh, know that was Canada an original South song. Park. That was another funny <laughs> one I came across. Which honestly, it's songs that are in the movie integrated. I always try to side with more, but yeah. Can Jack? Uh, the big ones are definitely well. History of Violence losing the crash. History of Violence is one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. Um, City of God again. We mentioned before. Fellowship of the Ring losing a beautiful mind. Um, for actor, beautiful I think Mickey Rourke for the rest are losing to Sean Penn and Milk. Yeah, like, yeah. 
he he was fucking amazing in that movie. He, he and I love her. Won. Rourke should have won that, and I think a landslide victory over Milk. Um, Clint Eastwood in Unforgiven, losing the Pacino scent of a woman. Like I scent of a woman, solid. I, I but I don't know. I just think that what Clint Eastwood did, and like what felt like his true swan song for westerns, it felt so much more impactful in in. I don't know, better than Pacino sent to a woman. And then De Niro, Deer Hunter versus uh, John Voight and Coming Home. Uh, Pacino, I love in Deer, Deer Hunter, just in general, amazing movie. Uh, that's another guy who should be more etched into the Oscars Hall of Fame is John Cazale, right? The, he's been nominated for like 15 Oscars in like a four-year period before he passed away. Was dating, I think, Meryl Streep at the time, too. Yep. Um, <clears throat> crazy stuff. And then for actress, um, Scarlett Johansson in Marriage Story lost to... Renee Zellweger for um, was it Judy? Like I think again, Judy can eat rocks and fucking die for all I care. Um, I think ScarJo is better in Marriage Story, the best part of that movie. And then maybe Aquafina for the for Farewell because maybe that was just the more surprising. Farewell thing. was so underappreciated. Jesus. Very good movie, and she was awesome in it. She was so good, not not nominated as far as I know. Um, but yeah, she was great in that. And Renee Zellweger was just okay as as old Judy. I just got three uh, song Eye of the Tiger. Um, mm. Summer nights, or really, mo- Fuck, a lot of Grease. Man. Yeah, yeah. Nothing was any. That's Grease my song go-to nominated. karaoke song. One Grease song got nominated. That's. Fun. It was uh, hopelessly devoted hopelessly to devoted, you. Yeah. I yeah. had Disney too baked into my brain when I was looking up stuff for that. And then category. my last, I got. I just got to shout out Jake G again. I, I think Jake Gyllenhaal is a top five actor. I do. I think he's incredible, and Nightcrawler was sensational. So um, that's. I got to write that one down. Double too. watch it for sure. Yeah, so, no, yeah. Night, I, night, I mean, anything you wrote down, I mean, you wrote down a bunch. Nightcrawler is a, it, it's a, it's a great one. I love. Have you it. seen Prisoners, Eddie? No. Oh, uh, Prisoners is a great Jake Gyllenhaal role. Really? I got that's it. him and Hugh Jackman yeah. and uh, Paul Dano. They're directed yeah, by. You got to see more Denny Villeneuve movies. Yeah. yeah, I don't like the uh, war movie Big he's in. I think it was kind of fucking bad. Jake G. Yeah. Jarhead. Jarhead. Jarhead yeah, Jarhead. Oh, Sam Mendes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's no, great, that though. Could have been better. Like yeah. he's sensational. They would, it wasn't even a war movie. They were just like it, waiting for it. He's got a new. I think. I think that was like the point of Jarhead, but it didn't. Well, yeah, I, 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 yeah, um, of course. The uh, well, the what was the other one? He has the one with Guy Ritchie coming out soon, like the the translator or something. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it does not yeah, look looks does not look great. Yeah. All right, then I'll uh, do you anything else. I got there, yeah. I uh, my serious ones. Uh, I thought Leo's best role was The Departed. Um, I thought he crushed it in that movie. I can't. Put, and I want you guys. It looks like the entire movie only got one Oscar nom. American History X. Like that's that a great seemed, it's a fucking really like incredible movie. Ed Norton, I think, is one of the best actors ever. I love him. And then the kid that was in Terminator 2, his younger Edward brother. Edward Furlong. He was fu- that was, he was unbelievable in that movie. He was when he flicks the cigarette, he just looks like a little like you could see the cockiness and just douchiness radating off of him. Just a fucking unbelievable movie. And it only Avery got Brooks, one the guy Oscar nominee. The guy who played the principal, Avery Brooks, I think is fantastic. But he got like I think blackballed from Hollywood. Or something. I feel I, I feel like that movie, and I could be polar. I could be way wrong here, but I feel like that movie is just a layup line, like the type of movie it is for Oscar noms. And it mm. only got one. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that's kind of weird. All right, that's so I'm gonna a, read it the, through. That's, that's the year I think. Sorry, I think it's the year Benini won, right? The American for History. Li- yeah, for life is uh, beautiful. I guess right. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, crazy. Go ahead, sorry. Good one. No, you're good. Um, so, if you have a piece of paper or your phone or just something, this is where we vote off who you think had the worst draft, Kirk. That's okay. that's what we're doing because you can only put four people on a poll. Gotcha. So uh, right, right, right. that's I'll read it through the list one more time and then vote who you think did the worst. Okay. Uh, Jeff, The Dark Knight, Martin Scorsese for Goodfellas, Gene Wilder for Willy Wonka, Judy Garland for Wizard of Oz. I don't want to miss a thing from Armageddon. Eddie, Goodfellas, Tony Collette from Hereditary, Christian Bale from American Psycho, Footloose from Footloose, John Carpenter, Halloween, Kirk, Francis Ford Coppola, The Godfather, um, Uma Thurman from Kill Bill, The, the Social Network, Ray Liotta from Goodfellas, You've Got a Friend in Me, Randy Newman, uh, right. Ken Jack, Amy Adams, Arrival, uh, Listen from Dreamgirls, uh, Quentin Tarantino and Glorious Bastards, Jack Nicholson from The Shining, Fargo. White Sox, Dave, Kate Winslet from Titanic, Quentin Tarantino from Pulp Fiction, Saving Private Ryan, Be Our Guest from Beauty and the Beast, and Thurman Merman from Bad Santa. 
Um, all right, so write down. <laughs> tell me who else could have done that. I don't think that. I need to write before it down. Before you laugh, before you laugh, <laughs> tell me who else. I write it down. Tell me who else could have done what Thurman Merman did in that movie. <laughs> Nobody. He's a oh. one of one. He's a unicorn. <laughs> Do I have to write? White Sox Dave or is just Dave okay? Anyway? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same question. I'm rebranding. I'm Wildcats Dave right now, but only for the basketball team. Jeff, who do you got? Okay. I'm going to be controversial here. I'm going Eddie. Wow. <laughs> who do you got, Dave? I got Ken Jack, but not because I, his board's bad. It could be awesome. I have, I've only seen two of the movies. Uh, Dave, I thought you had a great draft until the last pick. I know you were fucking around. Because I was going to vote Kendrick just because I didn't know the first two, even though I like. I Kendrick's think my reasoning too. for the Thurman Merman pick does hold a little weight, and <laughs> I mean, I'm just, like one percent <laughs> serious you were there. Down when you picked it, you're like, ah, it's over. Yeah, I, I thought you had a good draft. I, mean, I got to vote for you, so you're off. But I thought you did well <laughs> before that. That's fine. Yeah, I, I wanted I wanted Thurman <laughs> Merman on my board, so I'm happy with it. All right. Well, yeah. I don't see what's wrong with that. I mean, I could have it. taken Ed He's Norton. He's also, I think we could have, he's supporting too, but whatever. You know, you want a Thurman Merman. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I got it. I, now I have to go because he was a supporting character. He wasn't the lead. He absolutely was, but you seem so fucking steadfast on having this guy. I didn't want to. Well, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't stopping him. Yeah, I don't want to stop no, him. No, it's because every time I see uh, Bad Santa on TV, I'm like, Thurman Merman should have won an Oscar. So it's kind of like an inside joke with my, I'll tweet it. So it's kind of an inside joke with myself because he is perfect in that movie. He's <laughs> That's what everyone loves when they're voting on what's the best winner of a draft is the inside joke guy. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. what always gets you the votes. Yeah, exactly. But you guys do agree he was perfect in it, right? He was good. Yeah, no, 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 no doubt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I don't see why I get voted off. All right, then. We'll see who wins. Kirk, thank you for coming back. Anytime, guys. Uh, Jeff, Ken Jack, thank you. Uh, Oscars coverage, you guys are going to be – I assume LCB is – Graph. Adorable, just yeah. LCB. Kirk's gonna come on for an. He hasn't been on LCB to come on for an episode. I don't know what either before or after. I, I feel like after just because we're gonna want to talk about whatever the fuck mm -hmm. we do. But we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have Kirk on and yeah, yeah. Uh, beautiful. Thanks Oop. guys, appreciate it. Thanks everybody for listening. Thank you for Thank watching. You, fellas. We'll that see was you fun one, of course. Thanks guys. Thanks guys. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you.